Hello, everybody. <laughs> Maybe I misunderstood. If you draw seven black cards, is are we done? We're done when I draw seven cards, period. I you need help. I need help, I don't... Where's the boy? Come on now. He gets up. <laughs> the crate lid falls. <laughs> Something comes out and the bucket kind of oh. smashes against the wall. A bunch sure. of mean people. What? What? <laughs> Was that directed at us? That's what you told me. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Kate is gonna start She's gonna get cracking up. up. Got him. <laughs> Hello, everybody. <laughs> Welcome back to Tabletop Notch. We're coming at you with chapter 16 wow. of Brunk Hollow. Wow. 16 episodes in. Travers oh, Burns. Things, um, things are definitely heating up between uh, Morna's little reveal and Kate finally breaking through the mm. tough exterior of May. Oh, Brooklyn. can't wait Ooh. to sniff her face. <laughs> Excuse me? Your face is so close to me. Oh. Where we last left off, you know. That's, a, that's real cheesy. Kate's like, yeah, you can look yeah. at it, but you, I'm holding it. I have to hold it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But before we dive in, as always, we have a little bit of housekeeping to take care of. Where shall we begin? Now when I say where shall we begin, I really don't know. I used <laughs> to know, but now I really don't know. <laughs> Stay tuned I guess I'm doing photo. <laughs> yes. Uh, 16 means it's a multiple of four, which means that tonight is another notch and soda. For yeah, those yeah. very people close to our hearts that are Twitch subscribers, uh -huh. YouTube members, uh -huh. top notch patrons, Ooh. or Spotify subscribers. Yeah. So if you are one of those people, we'll see you later. And if you're <laughs> not, you should join one of those things that you can see our little uh, uh, Tete a tete yeah, after the, the show, You're talking yeah, about the last four episodes. Mm -hmm. we'll chat. There's yeah. a lot to discuss since the last time we oh, yeah. uh, we Ooh. sat and, and chatted, and uh, we'll answer questions as always. I think we had a couple questions that we wrote down from mm. other sources, uh, yeah, YouTube people, and yeah, <laughs> or written. I don't know. We'll make they have up. been written. Yeah. <laughs> Speaking of sources and places you should join us, uh, we're on every single social media platform out there except for apparently Snapchat. Though I'm sure we could pressure Jordan into making Snapchat. Oh my uh, God. If you want, but that means Instagram, Threads, Twitter. You can uh, find us on all of those places, and you should. And you, this is a great time to just get on your phone or your devices and go and follow us in this intro period. It's a great time, yeah. What do people use Snapchat for now? I actually have no idea. I don't know. I've never had one. Is it still like the dog? I, I'm gonna the reveal dog. myself. You know the dog where people are like, oh, I stick out the oh, tongue. The filters. The filter? I feel like. Uh, is it that? Filters. I don't know okay. if anyone. If, uh, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I'm, I'm looking. Like, I'm looking I, to the younger cast members. <laughs> <laughs> is, that, is that what people are doing? No, Let's get you to bed, yeah, Grandma. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> they had some of the banger filters for a long they time. They did. They would oh. use the Snapchat, yeah. download the video, and then post it elsewhere. That is true. Mm -hmm. oh. Okay. Speaking so of ahead of their post. That was an anthropology <laughs> lesson. Yeah, yeah that was a good thing. A place you can post things. Discord is a good place to post <laughs> things. If you uh, like seeing uh, Maeve in a dog filter, you can make that and put that in the oh. fan art channel. <laughs> and that is, there's some great fan art there. Um, there's uh, a chapter discussions that come out after episodes where you can talk about your theories and all the fun stuff and just talk and have a good time. Um, and uh, what was a really fun thing I saw this week? Uh, Jordan was answering a question about Tailspire mods and uh, gave a huge list, and that was really cool as someone who also DMs to see that. So, yeah. Really cool. uh, ask, yeah. ask questions. People are always around. We have a great community there. Yeah. Say hi, post your theories, and we'll get the typical response. Yes, I love that. <laughs> <laughs> Um, that brings me to loving theories. The other thing I love is uh, merch. I love merch. I'm really doing improv right now. Ooh. Yes, um, and. Yeah, yeah, oh, it is good. being. Um, yes, merch. Uh, I love merch. We got merch here. We have merch from you know the first campaign. If you still want that, um, that bag? we got these. these oh, yours. Here. So you know, get out there, get that merch, um, and. You'll love that. And people will be like, why are, what, what are you wearing? Who are you wearing? And people will be like, who are you wearing? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, 
We have a Patreon. We just dropped our top, one of our top notch tiers of like the Hero Forge minis. This month it was the Yagolds, which are very oh goofy looking. They're very silly. Really really and we still owe you guys uh, for the big notch people. We owe you a homebrew thing. What we've done so far, well, we've done it for like 16 months now, which is crazy. But Brunkhalo specific aesthetics we've done for a couple months yeah. now. Yeah. You'll get access to all of it. We haven't dropped it for this month yet. Yes, this month is coming. Uh, but the most recent one was achievements and inspiration and yeah. all kinds of good stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so check it out if you like a little extra tools and, and tricks to throw into your campaigns. Uh, come along and join us there. The, nice. the other benefit of being on Patreon is you get to watch the very high def YouTube video that <laughs> drops on Tuesdays. Uh, if you don't subscribe on Patreon or YouTube, or um, what's the other one? That gives Spotify. You? Spotify. No biggie. You can see the episode on Friday, and you'll still love it. It'll still be high def. <laughs> it just won't be early. So yeah. Yeah. Did we crush it? Did I we think, crush it? That, that Podcast on Tuesdays. Seamless. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yes, yes. Podcast Tuesdays. Seamless transitions <laughs> abound. Wow. Um, as always, a shout out to the people who help us with the closed captions, the time stamping, the, the, uh, the wiki, yeah. all of that good stuff. Thank modding. you all very, very much. The modding, yes, thank you so much. We love you guys. Um, very, very much appreciated by all of us. Super. Okay. Are we ready for yes, some thank yous? Yes, we are. Yes, yes please. Are wow, we just cruise yeah. through this now. I really do. Thank you. All right, Fluffy Wolf, like. subscribe. Golden Dagger, resubscribe. Doofin Schmertz, booty cheeks, give out five community yes! subs. Yes, welcome. Everyone, resubscribe. Uh, I release the elves, resubscribe. Hello, uh, was yes, running. Give out five community subs. Beard acknowledge, resubscribe. Oh. Doofin Schmertz, booty cheeks to five thousand. Beard oh, acknowledge. <laughs> to me, Pro, three streams. My three. best Doofin Schmertz, booty cheeks did ten community subs. Thank you, Dave. The one resubscribe. The cheeks. The cheeks. Captain Kirk uh, reached three stream streak. Jay Brownie did a thousand bits. Golden Dagger did five hundred and ten bits. Mary the Noob resubscribed. Mary the Noob gave out five community subs. Understand. Thank you. Dave the One did a thousand bits. Cool Shaper did five hundred bits. Dave the One gave out five, <laughs> ten community subs. Oh. 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 Guys, words of a mute resubscribed. Helljack five hundred bits. Helljack resubscribed. Dave the One gifted another sub. Jay Brownie fifteen hundred bits. What is happening? Oh my gosh! Guys. I am Haley Smoke. resubscribed. Z, thirteen stream streak. G I'm saying those like I know what they mean. GF Powers hundred bits. Yasin Brown resubscribed. Rowan KT resubscribed. Doroth. Dorothka uh, did 100 bits. Thank Dorothka, you so much. Dorothka the Explorer. Words of the Free Good one. Kyle Jack 200 bits. Poshment 87 resubscribed. Thank you all so much. Thank you. Yeah. 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 Gifted a sub. Um, that, that means you get to watch yeah. the uh, um, Notch and Soda after Great the time to have a gifted yeah. sub. Um, yes. You can hang out afterwards um, and, and ask questions and stuff. Holy smokes. Thank you guys thank, so much. Wow. wow. Cheers. Wow. Guys. Yay. Cheers. Cheers. Thank, thank you for being so here. <laughs> Okay, does anyone have any last minute thoughts before we jump back? We're, we're kind of scattered around town here at the moment, a few different locations, and we'll bounce back and forth and uh, revisit. But uh, any other closing thoughts before we throw it over to the recap? No. no. All right. Ready? Yes. All right, everybody. <laughs> it is time for chapter 16, so let's do it. Here we go. <laughs> <laughs> Previously, on Chapter 15, Element for Each Other. TC raised the alarm to summon clinker reinforcements while Morna caught her breath following a wild afternoon. She confessed that the magic may be the result of her run-in with Haskell Pips, and that if she had any chance of reversing her fortunes, she'd need to find the elusive little bugger first. As those two returned to camp, the elves were about an hour behind, and they discovered the crossing in the aftermath of the attack. At least one prisoner had escaped, but perhaps more importantly, one of the clinker guards had lived, which could potentially spell trouble for Morna down the line. After some running of errands that took them to the Merc Hall, the Courier's Office, and the Goblin District, all roads led to Maeve Crittenden, and despite Doxley's underhanded attempt to shift the focus in her favor, Kate finally broke through on forming a kind of loose apprenticeship around a mutual interest in black powder. Could Maeve be trusted to keep the Mori family secrets under wraps? And with a choice between disobeying strict instructions and swallowing his pride, how will TC proceed with his local letter conundrum? Stick around and find out on Chapter 16, Brunk Hall. Damn wild magic!
couple of days ago, days that have felt like a couple of months, mm. one of the very first stops that you made after coming in on the Macklin wagon was to follow Kate to Maeve's little hut by the river. <laughs> <laughs> As you leave the two of them now, you can't help but grin at the stark differences in how those meetings have transpired. The proposed partnership that was once batted down before it even left the ground is now seemingly coming to fruition. And the progress gained in that regard makes you think about your own efforts to unfurl the mysteries that muddy the waters of your presence here. Some ambiguous local mentions of Yarpaya notwithstanding, you can't help but feel like you've been chasing ghosts, or even worse than that, chasing fables, picking up the yarn slower than it's being spun and pretending to find meaning in it. As you approach the Lucky Heathen, you're determined to figure out if it's all just tea leaves and tassiography, or if you have a future here that your past affiliations, potent that they are, can't poison to the point of no return. So you get to the front, just outside of the Lucky Heathen here, and you're kind of in the thoroughfare. Again, with things busy at this hour, people moving by, you kind of standing there, it, it doesn't attract any attention, so you have kind of a little moment to yourself just to... Settle yourself, gather your thoughts, plan your next step here before you step through the door. I just run a brief hand over the pocket that has the, the truth serums. Have Maeve's voice in the back of my head about using that on someone other than Montero's, but then being confused because she said, use it on them because I, that way I know you're using it on them and <laughs> getting <laughs> caught in that conundrum. But not <laughs> me, you bitch. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, and then stealing myself, and this is what I wanted to do, so is what I will do, and step into the lucky heat. The gaming floor is loose and lively. Those early hours of a casino's evening where thrill and optimism are so far unblemished by empty pockets and some realizations that one has bet more money than they can reasonably stand to lose. <laughs> you see Teddy moving from table to table, joking with the regulars, cheering on roulette hopefuls while the band plays something peppy to match his infectious enthusiasm. Somewhat surprisingly, Liam Montero himself is also present and not just making the rounds, he's actually sitting in on a hand of poker, uh, one of the tables in the back there beyond the roulette tables. His white robe adorned with golden clasps looks like it's fresh from the laundry. And when compared to the generally drab attire of his table mates, it makes him look like a celestial sun around which the lowly planets orbit. <laughs> wow. He seems to be quite content. He's drinking from that same oversized goblet that he had when you met him upstairs, alternating between big swigs and hearty puffs of a thick cigar. <laughs> it's a pleasant little picture from an enviable slice of life, a big fish in a small pond. This man reaping the benefits of his bravery by being one of the first to hunker down here in Brunk Hall. So you're seeing Teddy move from table to table. You see Liam. Those are the only people that you immediately recognize. You don't see like a lot of other people necessarily, which makes sense. There's, a, it's not quite at the hour where all the businesses are shutting down. So some other familiar faces might not be at the bar or at the tables or anything like that. Okay. Um, <laughs> I'll just move in uh, and I'll head straight to Teddy. Okay, great. Yeah, you catch him kind of between tables. He looks like he just set down two drinks, and then he turns and he sees you. Ah, Mr. Tyroon. Yeah, Teddy, was it? Of course, yes. Uh, it's good to see you again. Good I to see you. I'm looking for the Monteros. Um, I see one has graced the floor. Uh, yes. Is this, uh, should I not approach? Is he in a very wanting to enjoy his time right now. Not that I wouldn't be in enjoyment. Anyways, should I go see him? <laughs> I suppose that depends on the nature of your request. Right, uh, it was, uh, we sent, uh, we were sent on a mission for them the other day, yesterday. Yes, um, but you hadn't come by yet. Exactly, I wanted to uh, speak with them about, I told them I'd come back about what kind of reward could be talked about and wondered if tonight was a good night for that. I think a simple reminder would be all right. You can pop over and see if he uh, has a moment between hands. Perfect. Uh, thank you, Teddy. Yeah. Appreciate that. And he quickly, yeah, as soon as he kind of bows, in previously, sometimes when it was less busy, he would linger just to chat or something, but you can tell he's busy. He immediately yeah. kind of nods and someone else is already kind of flagging him down on the opposite side of the room there. Okay, I'll bring in my hands and 
head over to him. He heads straight for it. You move between a few of the tables again. You hear some of the roulette wheels spinning, some people like anxiously leaning over the table waiting for it to land, and then throwing money down on the table. You pass by a couple hands of Brunk Hollow double pass. You see some people sort of flipping over cards. You see someone kind of anxiously sitting there with eyes wide waiting to see if the, you know, the, the money, the cards come to them. So you're passing by the tables, a lot of people enjoying themselves, having fun, and you finally get to, there's like a row of four or five tables in the back that are more for poker or sort of open games, like anyone who wants to grab a table can grab one and, and play a game here. So the group all is sitting around. It's kind of a circle. There's, it seems like there's five other people in addition to him and around this kind of circular table. And <clears throat> you see Liam, who's looking at his cards as you're walking over, sort of, again, taking a big puff of his cigar, sort of contemplating the hand that he has. And he catches you out of the corner of your eye as you approach and gives you a smile and a nod. <clears throat> Fold. <sighs> he slides his cards across. Kind of action goes around the table. Cole, eh, fuck it, <laughs> throws cards in. It finally gets all the way around. One of the people wins the hand and they kind of slide the chips over in their direction. There. At that moment, I'll go in. Um, <laughs> go in. Uh, I'm in there. I will <laughs> take that money that's on the <laughs> yes, I'll, I'll, I'll grab it all. Congrats, everyone. Um, sir, uh, Montero. Ah. Uh, Mr. Tyrone, yes. welcome back. I would uh, offer to deal you in, but I'm afraid you wouldn't like this game very much. Uh. You see, the fun is in trying to determine when your opponents are bluffing. And if everyone just knows when everyone is lying, it sort of defeats the purpose of the game. <laughs> no. I could see how that would fuddle the game a bit. <laughs> everyone. Stretch your legs. Uh, take a little walk around the floor. A round of drinks on me while you ambulate. And he takes some chips. He kind of tosses them to the people to the side. Some people tip their caps. They get up. They grab their chips or cards and kind of move off the table. Have a seat. Thank you very much. Um, a little while ago, uh, up in that meeting, I said, um, after your mission, I'd come back and find you, and we could talk about some sort of reward based on how hard the mission was. Yes, yes, of course. Um, would now be a good time? I'm looking for a bit of a conversation between you and uh, the madam, Montero. Uh, Chelsea's not in at the moment. I see. But this feels plenty private to me. Would you like to speak now? <laughs> uh, actually, um, I would much prefer somewhere even more private. Uh, Mm. If that's okay with I you. I like that the noise covers the conversation down here. Also, I like that it has the benefit of Teddy coming to refill our cups at a moment's notice. Very true. Um, okay. Uh, I'd be okay with uh, at least opening a conversation and see where that leads tonight. You can sit close if you like. All right. Um, I had the feeling that and if this is a private space, you and uh, Mrs. Montero know a bit more than the average person about clerical things, perhaps religious things, uh, maybe just larger knowledges in general. And I'm wondering if I could spend the time to peruse that brain of yours for some knowledge and in turn give some of my own. Information you're looking for. I expected more of you to take your reward in the tangible rather than in council. But who am I to deny you the pleasure of my company? If we get through the night and you feel I'm still owed, I will take some gold, um, <laughs> but we'll see. We'll see when that happens. Tell me this before we begin. Without certainty of its efficacy and without compulsion on my part to respond, what is it you hope to gain by uh, bringing along those bitter little bottles that may have informed me of? Right. I'm actually glad that Maeve opened the door to that conversation, uh, as I felt it would be very abrasive of me to just arrive and tell you that I have them. Mm. Um, you find this less abrasive? <laughs> uh, barely, but at least there's an open door. Um, I, to put it simply, am looking for some information that is very important to me and 
important enough that I would not be lied to about it. And it's not to put any offense towards you and Mrs. Montero, more to protect myself and actually find the reason why I'm here in Brunk Hall. <laughs> you are young. Everything has to be fast, has to be now. It's trust not better when it is earned over time. And do you not risk eroding said trust rather than fortifying it by looking for a shortcut? I do risk some erosion, but I hope that the knowledge that I can share actually tightens a sort of bond. Mm. Mortgaging the future a bit to pay for the present. Precisely. I will not pretend to know your situation. So, if this is the road that you want to take, hand me the vial. All right. Um, I don't know if may have explained to you, but I had two made. One is for myself. Um, that way you'd know anything that I say to you would be coming from somewhere honest. She told me, yes. All right. Well, bottoms up. He takes it from you, and before he drinks, he sort of pauses for a moment. He takes that kind of big goblet, and he moves it closer to himself, but he doesn't sort of pour it in or take a sip from it. Before we drink, the benefit of uh, receiving advance notice from Maeve, we're going to mix this serum with a small spoonful of Bullywug Croker saliva. It's mostly odorless and tasteless, but it will decrease the likelihood of resisting the serum's effects. Oh. No point in doing this if we're not going to do it right. Oh. I greatly appreciate that. That was my biggest worry. <laughs> he reaches into a pocket, that he's sort of oh, that so big weird. white robe that he's wearing, and he pulls out a sort of a, it's a vial, but it's more, it's, it's almost like a, this size, like it's wider than, than a typical sort of thin vial. And it has a very viscous liquid, like he's sloshing it around and it's kind of thick, it like moves back and forth. It's really, really. crystal clear. It looks like rainwater in a glass there. But he has it, and he kind of puts it on the table, he carefully unscrews the top, and he takes out a little kind of brass spoon that he has. Takes a little helping of that, and sort of demonstrating in good faith, he puts it in his first. He takes a little bit of it, puts it into the goblet, and then takes the vial that you gave him, and and then takes the thing and <sighs> sloshes it around. <clears throat> yeah. Thank you. Hand it over. <clears throat> um, I'm not gonna mix mine in anything. I don't feel anything cheerful happening tonight, so I might as well just get this over with mm. and go for it. So, uh, excuse me. You take both of them at the same time, you feel that intense, Ugh. bitter sensation, and then you have the spoonful of the saliva as well, which is, like you said, pretty much tasteless, but the texture is a very, like it sticks to your throat. It feels like it's almost kind of just, feel, you can feel it going all the way down from the back of your esophagus all the way down until you swallow and finally kind of suppress it into your stomach. Meanwhile, uh, Liam sort of takes, sloshes the drink around, takes the goblet and, <laughs> Puts the goblet back down. I need you to give me a constitution saving throw okay. with disadvantage. Because oh. the purpose okay. of the uh, Bullywug the bully. Saliva. The bully boy. Oh, double three. <laughs> okay. Oh, Jesus. You have indeed failed. That was the truth today. You can't lie for the next hour. You can't speak a knowing. So lie. long. <laughs> oh my God. Wow. Ah, uh, you have a strong stomach to drink it like that. It wasn't as easy if, if it looked easy, it was not. <laughs> uh, in the interest of preserving the illusion of our camaraderie here on the floor, mm -hmm. as well as adding a wrinkle to the tedium of certainty, mm. this is how it's going to work. <laughs> Takes out his deck of cards. I'm going to pull. 14 cards, okay. seven red, seven black. And then one at a time, you are going to choose which one to flip over. If it's red, you ask me a question. If it's black, I ask you a question. We do this seven times. Wonderful. And then we go our separate ways for the evening. Oh. I hope I have enough in my mind that you wish to ask about for seven questions. We shall see. If my questions gets boring, it's because you're boring me. <laughs> <laughs> I try my best. 
He picks seven of each. He shows them to you. He doesn't seem to be trying to. Seven red cards and seven black cards. He takes Great. those. He shuffles them out. Keep your eyes on this one. Mm-hmm. He shuffles them out in front. <laughs> Cool, <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, could you imagine? Oh my god. <laughs> I kind of can't. I would poop. Matt places out two rows of seven. <laughs> <laughs> you can hear that wet card. Yeah, yeah. Out. <laughs> he wetly flips the card. <laughs> Let's, uh, can we bring the. Oh, is that one not working? I got it. Uh-oh. Mm. Oh, that one's not up on that one. Son of a <laughs> <laughs> He lays out two rows of cards yeah, using the seven black. And the seven so black. satisfying. Mm. Very well. Shall we? Please. Uh, s- start with the top left here. This Great. One? Yeah. I forget what the colors mean. Black. We'll start with uh, me asking you a question. Wonderful. Are you scared right now? Very. Very scared. Pick another card. I'll go down the line. Uh, The next one. Of the people you came to town with, not including your sister, who do you trust the most? (laughs) Um... In a fight, I'd say Morna, but altogether, Kate. Pick another card. Uh, this side's not doing me any favors, so I'll uh, head to the other <laughs> corner here. <laughs> One for you. Um, I guess start off simple. Uh, Mr. Montero, does the name- You don't get another one. <laughs> Maybe I misunderstood if- you draw seven black cards, Is are we done? We're done when I draw seven cards, period. Oh. Does Never. that make you wish not to start soft? <laughs> <laughs> yes, uh, and I guess we'll just jump straight to it. Does the name Tyrune, and furthermore the name Shantara Tyrune, mean anything to you? Shantara, no. Tyrone, I feel like I had heard before I came here. I heard it again after the two of you arrived, not just because you introduced yourself. There were whispers that members of a group called the Gori Onan had come to town, hmm. and that this was largely headed up by the Tyrone family. Now, I didn't know much about the Gori Onan when I heard about it, but I have since asked around. Hard not to have my opinion colored a bit by that, yes? I respect that, greatly. All right, um, that's all. (sighs) Let's go to the middle, on the first row. Uh, Sorry, point to where you're looking. Yeah, fourth one in, uh, one more, (laughs) yeah. All right. Jesus. Jesus. So we're halfway done. <laughs> Is that the question? No. Yeah, oh, shit. <laughs> Possibly the whole way done if you draw nothing but black from here. You can see now how this game is designed to have people get to the point. Yes. <laughs> I need... I'm gonna do a brief look and make sure that really no one is here. Give me a perception <laughs> check, but it's busy here. I mean, this yeah, is this is like it is ramping up prime hours here at the Lucky Heathen. Uh, that is going to be a 19. 19. As you look around, the only person that seems to be really paying attention to this table at all, you see Teddy check in, and he's not like listening, but yeah. you see him like he knows that he's supposed to check in with Liam occasionally. So you'll see him kind of just peek over, and Liam sometimes just waves or something to that effect. But other than that, the din is covering your conversation with aplomb. I need to know what you know about Yarpaya. I need to know what it is. I need to know if it's an organization, a place, a person, a thing. I have nothing. 
A funny little word that seems to come and go. Why do I feel like I'm about to learn more about it in this conversation than you are? That's only if you wish to continue this conversation after this game. Hmm. It came up at the Gnome Nook when they were trying to dig a well up there. Came up again during a murder investigation. Right. You're nodding like you've heard this before. I visited the well, and I've heard about this murder. I also saw it on a piece of jewelry once, or a necklace, or a locket, rather. <laughs> it had a picture of a warrior inside. You ask me what Yarpaya is, if it's a person, an organization, I don't know for sure that it is a person, but in this locket there was a picture, a holding a blade. I did not recognize the figure from the histories. This locket once belonged to a man named Ramo Klein. On the outside, he was a thief and a pirate. But in his twisted mind, he actually believed he was enacting the will of the divine. Apparently, he was very well known to some, especially those that he took from. And he used to say that it was the gods who had lost their way, but that they would come to see his glory. Can you imagine the hubris of such a man? Yeah. Anyway, it did not last. It was said that the clerics got to him eventually. Hmm. Now the locket came into my possession when I paid someone to steal it. Not from him. There was a man that used to come in here fairly frequently who idolized Mr. Klein. Believed he was something of a folk hero because he mostly stole from people who could afford to lose. This man bought the locket at an auction after they raided one of Ramos' safe houses in Piran. And he would hold it up here at the tables and say, God see my glory, whenever he would spin the roulette wheel. <laughs> I didn't like to hear that overtly <laughs> theistic nonsense, especially in my place of business. So I had the item nicked. And that man was a clinker, and later he was found murdered, his body mutilated, carved into his chest the word Yorpaya. I don't know what it all means. It hasn't come up again, so I didn't lose much sleep. And now you know all I know. This Ramo Klein, um, I hear he's actually alive and well. Perhaps he's the next look that I need to find. Who told you this? My trustworthy friend, Kate. She has evidence of his existence. I heard from many people that Mr. Klein is no more. I heard there was a brief encounter in the downwield with someone stating they were Ramo Klein. Mm. Daphne at the Merc Hall was familiar. Seemed to maybe believe that- Familiar it with the name, not with having seen him. Yes, that it's a possibility that if he is around, she knew who he was. Um, so there's a person out there claiming to be Ramo Klein, and your friend claiming that she met Ramo Klein. That is two points of weakness in a flimsy story. Unfortunately, a flimsy story is all I have to go on. You can go on whatever you want. This locket, can you part with it? That sounds like a question for another card. <laughs> oh. All right. Uh, where the Ace of Hearts is, let's go down uh, two this way. No. Oh. Uh, one for me. You have a good relationship with your mom and dad. I have a relationship, which I assume will be sundered very soon. Mm. Um, I respect them, 
but I don't agree with them. And simply not agreeing would sunder a familial relationship such as this? Well, seeing as you're so well knowledgeable about the Tyrunes and the Goryeonan, and this is a conversation between someone I hope to garner a bond with, I hope to separate myself from my family, the Goryeonan. It's part of the reason I came to Bronk Hollow, and that is what I believe will cleave a final bond between my parents and I. Mm. Go ahead. The odds are in my favor. All right. Um, let's go diagonal to the ace here. Yeah. Fuck. Oh, oh no, buddy. Time is running out. <gasps> He looks at you kind of very intensely for a moment, he even leans in a little bit. It seems like he's gonna like sort of speak in a hushed tone, covers his mouth slightly. What's your favorite color? <laughs> Are you growing bored? No. Huh? Silver. Mr. Montero, if this card is black, I am going to cry in front of you. I'm sure. <laughs> um, Bruce Sarah must be kicking in. <laughs> Could not torture that information from me. <laughs> I'm going to go with uh, one above the Queen of Spades, please. Ooh! Mama, Papa. Mama, see Papa. Now that we're here, I, I have so many questions, I don't know which one to ask. Uh, I'm going to trust you with uh, everything, Mr. Montero, because I have nothing else to lose. If I told you something that, where my family could have come from hundreds, thousands of years ago. And it's something you believed. Could I find protection under your umbrella? Would it be something that you would help me find more of, a truth? Something to fight back against this world, the clerics, See him open his mouth once, and he closes it again. I would like to say yes, but I don't know that I can give you what you're looking for. You seem to have a lot of influence in this town. If I was someone you stated as working under you. Does that provide some sort of untouchability? <laughs> there is a gaping chasm between protected and invincible. <sighs> Are you wishing to know more before you give me any more answer? wouldn't say you'd fully asked me a question yet. You can follow up on it. Do you believe that there is good power in divine nature? That something that does not come from whatever these clerics wield? I believe you speak of oaths. Mr. Tyrone. Perhaps. If it's out there, I haven't seen it. But that does not mean it isn't. Something that we are all learning together here in Bronk Hollow. Is that we are rediscovering some things that were lost. 
Some things that are lost never come back. Whether because the knowledge is lost or the will is lost. I wouldn't know how to help you on that particular journey, I'm afraid to say. Which isn't to say I would be opposed to you trying. <laughs> This has been lovely. Uh, I'm afraid I I feel more lost than when before I came here, but uh, thank you for allowing yourself to be drugged for a lovely conversation between two people. I'll have to put out, put off continuing to play cards for a while while the <laughs> percolates. Right. I suppose my suggestion, which is worth very little, I suppose. Determine just how much you trust, Kate. If for no other reason, then determining whether this Rommel Klein is really out there. Or, if he isn't, why someone is pretending to be him. Well... I believe it's the strong who can be overly trustworthy. That way I can deal with the repercussions with the actions that I give. And I'm searching for a new family and I'm hoping I find one in my party. So whether that treats me in a, a bad way, I choose to trust the people I've been traveling with wholeheartedly. We all find family here in Broncolo for one reason or another. And much like real family, sometimes you fight with your siblings. I give you one for free, only because uh, I baited you a bit. <laughs> I would give you the locket if I could, but I'm afraid you've already destroyed it. I see. <clears throat> there was a collection of items in the tavern when you went south to evict the goblins. I'm afraid that locket would not have survived a fire. Have you seen it with your own eyes? Or someone, would anything down there have survived a fire? We sent someone to make sure the place had burned down, but I cannot say I stepped foot in the basement. All right. Thank you, genuinely. Mm. It's something that I do from time to time, call me superstitious, is get people to steal religious trinkets and I put them down there. I'll have to find a new spot going forward. A little bit of psychological warfare against the God-fearing folk. They just find their items disappearing out from us. <laughs> That's wonderful. Uh, I hope to hear more tales of such thievery. I'm going to excuse myself now. You may. And you do have some measure of protection. But that's all I can offer you. Thank you, Mr. Montero. Have a good evening. I'll walk out and leave. Head through the floor, shaking your head a little bit, you know, some knowledge gained and yet so much still yeah. just out of reach as you felt like you were trying to pull at the threads Ooh. there. It didn't quite all come together at the end. <sighs> and you have a little time as you kind of exit back out into the thoroughfare, you feel the air in your face once more just to think. So. For the duration of Maeve's du dutiful duplication of your notes. <laughs> oh my god. You could swear there are times where she almost seems like she's enjoying herself. <laughs> <laughs> 
In addition to understanding a good portion of the symbols that she's reproducing as she looks back and forth from page to page, it's obvious that this isn't the first time that she has penned a page in Primordial. Like she's not just like trying to trace it or something. She looks at the symbols and then she draws it herself. So she has some ability to, to replicate it. Even though the process is slow, you can see that her brush strokes are borderline calligraphic. They have a kind of flair to them. An attempt to preserve not just the literal meaning of the words, but the intention behind them as well. Since the moment that you removed this bundle of faded parchment from the floorboards, they have felt frustratingly sort of fossilized. Interesting enough to look at, but lacking any kind of context or substance. And yet here this woman is, breathing life back into the words, reading them and recording them in a way that somehow feels more like a Mori than anything you've seen from your parents or grandparents in the entire time that you've known them. Something like 45 minutes goes by before Maeve finally pushes aside her inkwell and she sits back in her chair. Though with the essence of ether swirling about your head, your concept of time is a little fuzzy. <laughs> Her cigarette has been whittled down to a nub, but instead of reaching for a new one, she pulls a liquor bottle from the cabinet <laughs> and makes a healthy pour into two mismatched flasks. There's like one sort of test tube looking thing and then sort of a larger thing. She pours into both. <laughs> and one of which she slides over to you. With neither grace nor gratitude, but not in a rude way, just in a in a very, like, this is where we are kind of way. This is where we're at. And you kind of reach up to cheers, but she just. <laughs> <sighs> Whoever wrote this, they got fire in them. Mm -hmm. They're fucking funny too. <laughs> There's a part here, and she pulls one of the pages over, where they talk about purifying nitrates and how the process has got that stale piss smell. To acclimate oneself to the odor, and she's kind of running her quill along the lines as she's reading it. To acclimate oneself to the odor, they suggest spending time with some of the local flagrant drunks. <laughs> and they've kindly included a list of suitable subjects. Public shaming in a scientific archive. <sighs> It's full of personality. It reads nothing like the cowardly alchemists of today. She pours a little more in her glass again. As I said, I'm gonna need more time with other parts of it. If you need to give yourself something to think on until the morning, you start pondering where you might pick up these primary ingredients. Now charcoal's easy, but then you got sulfur and then this thing called, and she kind of runs her quill again over the page, saltpeter. It's possible they may have found sulfur deposits in some of these mines that they're digging out, but Bison and I don't get along well enough for me to ask him. Maybe you and him can have a conversation. Oh, that man freaks me out. We'll find someone else to ask. <laughs> Now this last one, Saltpeter, it's gonna be the hardest, I'd wager. Now there's some suggestions on how to find it or even how to produce it yourself, but I got more translating to do before I could say with any kind of fucking confidence. Now before you go, I got something else you ought to fucking know. She squares off, she looks right at you. I am a 400 foot tall purple pegasus with <gasps> silver wings. Now, by that, of course, I mean, I'm not beholden to the truth serum. She motions to the sort of burning nub of the cigarette that's sort of in an ashtray. The sapphires have always had a bit of a diluting effect. You may find that that one puff you took shaved a few minutes off its duration. Now, I know that ain't a comfort to you, nor should it be, but I stand by what I said, and I say with no deceit, I ain't gonna spill your secrets willing, but also know this, I ain't gonna die for them neither. Someone else finds out what you're playing at, it won't have come from me, but 
but if they come knocking on my door, I got plenty of things that I would take to my grave. But this ain't one of them. I think that's more than fair, Maeve. And I hope you trust that boy more than I do. Because I think you already fucked up even saying the words black powder in his presence. I do trust him. But I'll try to be more careful going forward. You know where he comes from? Nothing good. That's right. <laughs> Nothing fucking good. Anyways, I think it's time for you to ruminate elsewhere. I gotta pay Josie a visit, see if she can make me a replacement paddle for my water wheel. Mm. Any of those books that you happen to bring with you written in common? Some of them. Probably not the ones that are most interesting to you. What are you looking for? I would love any kind of reading I can do before bed. When you come by in the morning, I'll have a couple introductory manuals to give you. It ain't much, but you gotta learn the basics first. What kind of things you can combine, what kind of things don't combine, and what kind of things blow up in your fucking face. <laughs> yes, ma'am. And I'm happy to help you with that paddle in the morning as well. It's all right. Josie's the one who built the fucking thing, so she should be able to fix it. All right. Um, truth serum notwithstanding, before I go, I had a very weird interaction earlier today, and you knowing all kinds of things, I'm wondering if you've heard of the name Ramo Klein? Sounds familiar, but I don't know it. All right. Thanks. Someone around here? Some weird looking man or ghost out in the downwheel? Did he look like a fucking ghost? <laughs> no, he looked like a man, but he had the aura of a ghost. <laughs> like he fucking scared you or what? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, like that. <laughs> I'll ask around. All it takes to be a fucking ghost nowadays. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'll let you know if I hear the name. Thanks. Um, Kate is gonna like put out her hand. She has like the liquor in her <laughs> hand. Pleasure learning from you. See you in the morning, bright and early, I'm sure. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> I'm gonna uh, grab the, the notebook and just slide mm -hmm. it back towards me. Mm -hmm. Clutch it a little and then take a deep breath and walk out the door. You head out the door and just as you're closing it, she's sort of drinking, finishing up her drink as you're walking out the door and the, as the door is swinging shut, you can hear her put it down and then immediately like start to flip through some of the pages. And uh, so does that be like 10 more minutes of Yeah, you probably telling? have about 10 more okay. minutes of, of com compulsion to tell the truth. Okay. As you come back out into the third. With daylight fading fast, the town is once again changing its, into its evening attire. Lanterns coming on one at a time. Stones brought in toward the open market for that fire pit that they always make. And most businesses are finishing their last few transactions before locking up. You're starting to feel the rhythm of Brunk Hollow at this point. You know which places close first, where you can expect to see certain people in their free time, and who looks like one of Bison's prospectors versus an independent miner. They just have a kind of different air about them that you're starting to get the rhythm of. This isn't to say that the place doesn't have its surprises, but having a handle on what is ordinary and what is not goes a long way toward feeling like less of an outsider. TC, Morna, and Doxley take strides through the thoroughfare toward their next destination, and the people you pass by have mostly lost that look of assessment. As you were coming through town the first times, you'd always get kind of a side-eye glance or people trying to gauge whether you came into town recently or whether you came from the prison. They might not know much about you, but your presence is no longer obtrusive like you're a small rock caught in the bottom of their boot. 
You are, we're going back in time a little bit, but you're heading out of Maves and in the general direction of Paramount, although you're, you know, walking through that sort of strip there, coming away from the river. What, uh, where are you headed? What direction are you kind of moving? Yeah, so do I pass excavation on demand? Yes. Oh, great. Mm -hmm. So as Doxley's walking through the town, just... <laughs> All right, what's next, you ugly sea elf? Yeah, and I'm gonna turn and go into excavation on demand. Great, you start to turn in that direction. And when you get closer to the place itself, <clears throat> The people, uh, there's a couple of people outside and they're pulling these sort of large barn doors closed that sort of uh, section off that big warehouse portion of Excavation on Demand. When you first met Delia Croy there, it was all the way open and you could see that wagons were coming in, they were dropping off rocks and then doing the rounds back again. But it seems like they're in the process of closing it up. They see you coming and they exchange the two of them that are there. They're, they have these like long cords or ropes that they're using to kind of pull these big doors closed. And there's sort of two of them, one on either side. And as you start to approach, you see the two of them look to each other and sort of give sort of an exhausted kind of resigned sigh. People filthy from the feet up who've clearly been toiling away at the digs all day long. You see the longing in their eyes for a stiff bar stool and an even stiffer drink. With obvious concern that you're about to prolong their working hours, the one man, one of them, uh, the one man, there's a man and a woman, and the half-elven man sort of turns to you, he, he lets loose the cord a little bit, and he straightens up, he gives a little nod, a bit of a forced smile. I know you ain't one of ours, but you got that look in your eye. Looking for someone in particular? Yeah, Bison. <laughs> Were you with Ace earlier today? I was, the very same, yeah. Yeah, we got word from Ace that some people might be stopping by. Got the impression it might be a group. You ain't all that's left, are you? <laughs> no, no, I just have uh, the rest of my crews doing other things. Well, I can run in and get your reward. Given that Ace thought you lot was all on friendly enough terms, I'm authorized to hand over the whole stack. But you best believe that Bison's gonna follow up to make sure that you divvy it amongst yourselves. That's fine with me, but I was also interested in seeing the man himself, if he's in. I think he's still in his office, yeah. And he sort of lets go of the rope a little bit. But we wasn't told the reward was negotiable in any way. You got a good reason for me to go get him, because if I bother him about nothing, I'm going to catch an earful. Of course, future business opportunity with him. And, uh, and she'll take out her coin purse and hand a gold to each of them. For your troubles, first drink on me tonight. She's all right. Wait here a moment. All right. You can see the other one is still sort of holding the cord, now bearing the weight of... So it, it, there's kind of like a pulley system that allows it to kind of shut, and she's kind of holding it. But you're still outside. He oh, okay. motions to kind of oh, wait okay. there, and he heads inside. A couple of moments pass and you start to hear what sounds like footsteps moving downstairs. You hear like a thum, 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 thum. And you hear a little bit of conversation. And as they get closer to the door, it's harder to pick up at first. It seems like they're at a little bit of a distance, a little bit of a remove, and they get a little bit closer, and then you can hear a little bit. We already inserted some of the lock rods. The door is nearly shut. Yeah, well, I don't feel like going back up the stairs and then down to the front, so I'm telling you to open it back up. <laughs> And get it actually fucking open, because my physique is not conducive to squeezing. <laughs> There's another sort of moment there. And slowly alternating between removing security rods. These doors have basically, as they shut, you insert these rods that then makes it so they can't go back the other way. It's an extra measure of security that makes the doors very, very difficult to open from the outside. Like you couldn't just force them open. So you hear kind of a shunk as they're like removing rods to make the doors part all the way open. The doors diverge and it makes for a rather clumsy reveal of a stout man who might care less about his appearance than anyone you've ever met in your life. At least among those who had some kind of claim to power or prominence. If you didn't know better, the hardened protrusion that's jutting out above his left temple could just be a clod of dirt that he didn't bother to wash off. But as you get a closer look, you can see that that's not the case. 
He runs his fingers through his thinning, greasy hair and then half-heartedly pulls at his tie and it leaves these streaks of some kind of grime before jamming both of his hands into his pockets. Behind him, you'd think they were storing the entirety of the downwield in this warehouse. There are piles upon piles of rocks and ore that nearly reach the ceiling in several spots. And there are carts packed so tight that you could step between the wagon beds without so much as hopping between them. In the back left corner, there's a steep staircase that looks like it leads up to a small office. But other than that, what you see is what you get. Bison's business is extraction, and every vehicle and every tool in here serves to advance that singular purpose. No art on the walls, no kind of break room area, nothing. It is a bunch of rocks, Bison's office, and the man himself standing before you. Uh, maybe you could tell me whose genius fucking idea it was to disable a man who needed to travel nearly 10 fucking miles back on foot. By the time Ace dragged his ass back to town, she was so red and puffy she looked like me having the meat sweats after a bowl of badger stew. <laughs> <laughs> Better her sweating than being dead. Yeah, you didn't answer my question though, did you? What was it? It was who fucking did that? <laughs> It was my crew. Yeah, who in your crew? I don't know if I want to tell you that. Because then you're going to start blaming individuals. We work as a team. She came into town carrying him like he was a fucking toddler. Which he is. Well, that's beside the point. A toddler with a lot of explosives. <laughs> you know, that kind of brutality bothers some people. And while I prefer a bloke who thinks before he cuts, sometimes you have to send a message. So whoever it was in your crew, why don't you have him come by at some point tomorrow? I'll see if I can put his violence to better use. That's a pretty tempting offer. How will I know you're not just gonna stick him in one of your little holes? I don't know if I care enough to do that. Fair, I'll consider it. Yeah, anyway. We had to practically stuff healing potions down his throat, but I suppose he did technically make it in one piece. He's on a wagon west now, and I can only hope that Broncolo is forever free of his cock-ups. So, I know I ain't much to look at, so I suppose you have some other reason for not just taking the money and being on your way. Yeah, actually, um, I've got a bit of a proposition for you, now that we've done a couple jobs for you. Are his... Crew members like still behind us? The two people are still there, like kind of, but like they're not right here and having having the conversation with you, but they're over by the doors. You're just inside the doors of you know a few feet. Okay, trying to be a little more clandestine about it. Um, I think I have someone who's particularly skilled at looking at stone, and you might be interested in having them look at something. And you don't think that's a level of expertise that I've already achieved? <laughs> No, with this one you haven't. Make a persuasion check. Ooh. Ooh. Oh no, I didn't pre-roll any dice. Oh no. <gasps> Sixteen. <laughs> <laughs> All right. When Ankle Cutter comes by tomorrow, why don't you send old Rocketon with him? <laughs> yeah. And we'll have a merry old chat, the three of us. Any chance I could tag along if I'm not one of those two lucky- Oh, people? fucking why not? <laughs> <laughs> Anything else? You don't seem terribly surprised that I know what she's gonna wanna look at. What? Terribly surprised about what? That I know about what she's going to look at, the stonemason. I thought she was gonna tell me what valuables I can extract from these fine fucking rocks. Oh, wow. Is that not a point? I am so glad we talked this one through, Bison. No. No, it's the thing that seems nobody should really know about, but yet everybody seems to know about it. If I find you a fucking needle, will you get to the point? <laughs> the meeting. The town meeting. What it was about. Boy, everybody runs their fucking gams, don't they? I'm trying to protect you, Bison. I don't know what your friends need to know and don't know. Yeah. 
You're telling me you got someone who knows where it came from? I know that they can take a look at it, and with their very skilled knowledge and expertise, maybe give you more information than you already got. You know, before you go moving it. <laughs> I guess she can have a look. Excellent. Tomorrow morning, then. Sure. <laughs> Great. Oh, and uh, before I leave, just the payment for not maiming your nephew. Reaches into a big pocket of his over, sort of over, oversized overcoat. He takes out what is, there's like a bundle, and inside it looks like there are several little pouches, so it's been divvied up into several. He hands it over to you. He has set aside a hundred gold for each member of the party. So he hands you a satchel of 500 gold. A hefty reward for the retrieval of one man. And that's a hundred each. And I'm sure it won't be the last time you hear from Ace. She's been nagging me to no fucking end about funding a little exploratory mission out east. So don't be surprised if she comes looking for you. Glad she's been pleased with our work so far. Sure. Anything else? No, I'm quite satisfied. Good. That makes one of us. <laughs> On your way, then. Cheers. And before he kind of turns around and goes back upstairs, that's the last fucking one for tonight, yeah? And the two people kind of, yeah, yep. Yeah. They start to kind of put the rods back in. <laughs> oh, fuck. As he sort of gets up the stairs, we're groaning as he moves his way. You got back outside. Got in there. Right in there. <laughs> what a character. Oh Talks so you're on a roll! Where are we going next? <gasps> uh, Which direction are you headed in? Uh, just generally? Oh, it's probably. It's probably dinner time. So. <laughs> shit. Yeah, Paramount. Okay, here we go. Head in the direction of Paramount. <laughs> what? <laughs> So walking around town, <laughs> intimidating people left and right. Everybody's doing everything you say. Doing your little dirty business. <laughs> Coming down along the riverbank, you swing around uh, the blacksmith. Bridge is on your right there, and you get back into the thoroughfare. Returning from a little jaunt through the goblin camp, your heart's still not fully settled, but you're not panting, but after a quickly moving through to snag the bag of trinkets from the preacher's tent before you moved off. So you're returning now to the thoroughfare. You're like right outside the blacksmith, kind of moving in the direction of Narvo CNC and uh, like Bernard's boarding right along the edge there. So you have a moment here to chat before you continue on through the thoroughfare. Oh, good gods. I didn't get you your bolts. <laughs> oh. It has only just now occurred to me. Great. Um, I well, can... That's all right. No, I'll run over there real quick. Here, there let me give you else. back your two gold. Thank you. Um, there's something else I wanted to get from over there as well. Uh, uh, hopefully they haven't closed yet. Um, it would be close. What? It would be close to closing time. Uh, yes. Um, these things we found. Yes. <laughs> Sundries. <laughs> um, I think I know who might be able to identify some of these things. Who? person that you also helped out with our oh. work last night. Maybe. Ah. Maybe, maybe we could swing by her place and see if she has any use for them. Sure. But I'll meet you there in a bit. I'm, I'm, I am gonna run to, okay. to the store first. And I shall wait for you? I don't think she's very fond of me. Uh, just make sure she's there. I'll, I'll see you soon. Okay and I'll kind of peel off. As you guys, before you sort of split, so you're kind of in that upper left corner of the map there, before you guys split, you kind of are walking and you get just beyond Josie's place. That's also kind of off to your right. Mm -hmm. You see the gate swing open to the pens of Bernard's boarding, where there's sort of like an area that's fenced off where he keeps a lot of his horses, his livestock. There's a man that's leaving in, in, a, in haste, in a hurry there. And it's not Bernard who you'd recognize by his sort of slim elven physique and his glass eye that he has. 
But you do recognize them, and it's Rufus Diamond, the father of the young boy who rode along in the carriage uh, with, he was with the Tyroons in the, in the other carriage, but you recognize them after sort of getting out here in town. He rode alongside you in that lead wagon of the caravan, and his son was very eager to hear of your exploits when you stopped by to speak with the Monteros. TC wasn't there for that initial meeting, but Morna was there. The man looks a little distraught, or if not distraught, at least a little frazzled. He seems like a little, sort of, a little manic energy, sort of cracking his knuckles, sort of, just a little pent up energy. He curses quietly to himself after he drops a couple of small pieces of paper onto the ground. He's holding something and then he, oh, shit, and he re bends down to pick them up. And it looks like they could be like rental slips for horses, like he just came from Bernard's boarding or like a wagon or something. As he reaches into the mud to scoop them up, he kind of slips and falls onto his side. Mm, a bunch of cards fell off, that's fine. We're not close enough to catch him, he's far away. No, 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 you're, you're seeing this from 40, 50 feet away. I he slips and falls on his side. <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of an ungraceful act that makes you think that he might be at least somewhat inebriated. He doesn't look like pissed up drunk, but he looks like he might be a little unbalanced, a little, a little tipsy. And that frazzledness and the drunkenness, it's kind of a, you know, an ugly combination, not in a pitying sense, but just a, he looks like a little bit of a mess at the moment. And then you start to see some tears well up in his eyes. And you see him sort of clutching those pieces of paper. And he's sort of getting up to his knees there. He now has kind of dirt up and down his arms from falling into the thoroughfare there. And he's kind of wiping off as best he can. Uh, I'll, I'll sort of, uh, uh, yeah, go up to him. I don't see the boy. I wonder what's gone wrong. Um, Mr. Diamond, are you all right? No. You again. I you need right, help. Sir? I need help. I don't. Where's the boy? Wes and I, we, we found out where my wife got laid low. Back on our way through the cusp. My boy mentioned to the sea elves that we was traveling with that we thought she'd been killed by a griffin up in the upwield. The best we could tell by piecing it together from different people that we asked, she stole a griffin egg and tried to bring it back to town. Now this was, this was months ago. The birds chased her down and just as she was getting close to town, she tried to duck into a small mine shaft for cover. And in her haste, she slipped and fell to her death. And that's what people told us. Now we asked around and, and this, this mine shaft, this, it belongs to Bison as, as many of them do. And, and Bison won't let us go down there to retrieve her bones. Abandoned or no? Abandoned, not in use no more. Then what the fuck does he care? I don't know. Now, now, now that was earlier today and, and as evening approaches, I, I go to the music box to have a quiet drink in remembrance of my wife. I come back to the tent to find Wes missing. And with some of our hiking supplies gone, I know exactly where he's off to. He's gonna go get them bones. Into the upwheel by himself. No, no, the mine ain't up there. The mine's close by. All right. That's where she got the griffin egg and she was almost all the way back to town. <sighs> now, I hear the mine's not in use anymore. One of them got, it was one of them test shafts that they sunk in the early days of settling. Not, not 20 minutes north on the civil road. And he points to the northwest. It's not out the eastern way to Detention Pass where you guys have mostly gone out of town. He's pointing toward the road that you guys came in on, sort of in the other part of the valley there. When we spoke to Bison, he denied us flat out. No discussion. And I got the feeling that he's, I don't know, keeping something there. Weapons, rocks, he's hoarding gold, I don't know. Now I gotta get in there and I gotta stop the boy. Or more likely, I gotta fish him out before he gets in more trouble than he is already in. Now I don't know if Bison's got people stationed there or if he got tripwires, traps, whatever. But I sure as hell ain't gonna lose another loved one to that same fucking duct. He looks to the two of you. I'd be ever grateful and 10 times that if you'd back my play 
even if it's just as a distraction while I slip inside and, and pick up Wes. We will accompany you. Let me go and get the Tyrones. I know Bison carries a lot of weight, but as far as I can tell, the man ain't a maniac, so if I get in, I get the boy, and I get out without taking nothing or, or touching nothing, I can avoid a dire outcome. We we will accompany you, Mr. Diamond. You don't need to go in the mine shaft. I think it better not. Well, I'm coming with you no matter what, whether Fine, I go in or not. Show us where it is. Let me let me run to the Paramount and, and get uh, the tire. And I'll get some more supplies from the store if I can. Maybe some links of rope or something. We'll be back as soon as we can. Don't I, leave with them. No, no, I know quicker's better. I, I, I'm going to gather some equipment myself. I'm headed to the, the dome tents to borrow some from an acquaintance of ours. Now, I'm going to be back, and he points to the bridge, to the West End Bridge in 20, 25 minutes. And if you can meet me there, I'll be elated with whoever you got. Very well. Thank you. As far as we are concerned, we don't know anything about Bison's words, all right? We're just yes. looking for We're West. just looking for a, a runaway child. Of course. And, and, and the place, he reaches into his pocket and he pulls out sort of a crumpled, the, the place, it ain't big. It ain't like we'd be wandering through the mines. I met a man who used to dig there back in the day and, and he had an old sketch that he had on him. Hands over to you. Just a couple of tunnels. The boy couldn't have gone far, is what I'm saying. All right, I'm, I'm gonna go get my supplies. Tw tw 20, 25 minutes tops. 25 minutes. Yeah, you see him and he starts to move off and he kind of slips again. Fuck. He get, pulls himself back up. And he... This day has been long. God. I don't know how useful I will be. You'll be fine. <laughs> off to the store. Off I go. And I'll run back towards Paramount. Okay, run Not the run, I don't want to alarm people <laughs> mm. on the street, but yeah. <laughs> you can sort of move quickly as long as you're not on a full sprint. Yeah. People are like, what the fuck? Yeah, exactly. Sure. Where are you headed? To Good as Gold. Great. So we'll follow TC first over to uh, Good as Gold. <laughs> As you start to approach the doors of Good as Gold, you see that currently down off of his usual high stool perch, Bailey Sampson suddenly looks very short standing in the doorway of Good as Gold. You're used to kind of looking up at him on his, uh, on his throne there in his shop. He looks like he's stepping back and forth at the threshold of the door, and you realize why. He seems like he's sweeping dust and dirt out. He kind of steps in, and he sweeps kind of out into the thoroughfare. The accumulation of a day's worth of muddy boots clomping around to sort of look at the inventory inside. You imagine that this is commonplace before closing to kind of sweep out all the dirt, but in a kind of unusual twist, Bailey's rather even-keeled and pleasant demeanor has been replaced by a man who seems a little miffed, not irate or sort of inconsolable, just a little perturbed as if he's received some unpleasant news. And without looking back, you can hear him kind of shouting further into the shop, and he sounds like he's speaking to his brother. And you get a little brief glimpse into maybe the source of his frustration as you get closer. I really don't think that we need to implement any additional <laughs> systems for rewarding loyal customers. Sweeps a couple more times. We already make space on our wagons for custom imports. Nothing that we provide is marked up beyond its fair value. For getting it to Bronk Hollow. Um, well, you are a stupid dum dum, so I wouldn't expect <laughs> you to understand. Uh, forgive me, Mr. Sampson. Uh, oh, my apologies, Mr. Welker. No, uh, quite all right. I can see that your day is winding down. I promise that I will be quick. Uh, yes, close to closing, but I'm happy to quickly grab something for you. Yes, uh, uh, two bundles of uh, ammunition for a. a sh uh, Bolts or arrows, Mr. Welker? Bolts, please. Yes, of course. Uh, have you got any. I know you've got health potions, yes? We do, yes. We carry health potions. A Damn. slight markup from the usual 60 gold. You don't have any potions that would, uh, <clears throat> give me a night's sleep in just a sip? If <laughs> such a potion existed, I'm afraid I would have used them all. <laughs> all right. That is to say, I do not. <laughs> <laughs> got it. Something like that, probably a better question for Maeve. Uh, in terms of... Uh, Potions and tinctures, it's mostly antidotes and healing here at Good as Gold. Got it, got it. How much would a, uh, a climbing kit put me back? Uh, let's take a look. He sort of rummages through some things. 
You've driven a wedge between the brothers. <laughs> I have. Oh my god. You've gone and done it now. Oh. Uh, if you want the full cool. climbers kit, it runs you about twenty gold. And that includes uh, pitons, grips, gloves, a harness, rope. If you need just a couple of things, it's less than that. Delightful. One of those and a healing potion, please. Of course. So 20 gold for the climber's kit, 60 for the healing potion, and then each case of crossbow bolts is two, so four gold for the bows. Uh, 80, 84 gold. Yes, thank you, Mr. Walker. Uh, now, I believe... Thunderstones was something that was on your catalog, yes? Yes, um, uh, Miss Tyrone came in to um, request a few items on the wagon. Is uh, that one of them? Uh, was that one of them? Oh, I can look back. All right, but yes, those haven't arrived yet. Uh, no, that was earlier today. <laughs> <laughs> Got it. It's been a long day. I would say uh, those are probably acquire, can be acquired at uh, one of the closer settlements like Sewal or Piran, so just a, a couple of days before we get those. Most excellent. All right, this will do for now. Thank you. Of course. Load up, and uh, I'm gonna hightail it back. Okay. Cheap. So um, you had where are you heading in the direction? So <laughs> that that bridge that he's talking about is over kind of back where we met him, right? Um, uh, between Josie's and the and the Smithy, right? The west. Uh, yes, that that right before you get to the cemetery, that bridge is the one that Rufus yeah. was talking about. Yeah. So if it's been less than twenty minutes, it has. Yeah. I'm gonna try to go over to the mortuary real quick. Okay, great. We'll have you scuttle off in that direction. Let's so things into my dang. A little bit of converging happening as um, uh, as uh, time wise, I think sort of Kate and Morna start to approach the um, the threshold of, of Paramount lodgings. And in the distance, actually, Ilian, you've just come out of Lucky Heathen, and you're wandering that direction, and you can see the two of them sort of reach the, the doorway of Paramount lodgings there. And as you're back at Paramount, the dinner crowd is mostly kind of cleared out. It leaves the lobby fairly sparse. Just a few muffled murmurs of conversation coming from the booths in the back. There is, however, someone at the front desk that's standing opposite Bassett Clemens, and it doesn't appear that they're a current or prospective tenant. The other person is a relatively lean dwarf with curly black beard so thick that you can't see where his mouth kind of begins and ends within this mass of tangled hair. And the two of them are hunched over a large piece of paper with some rectangular shapes printed on it that give it the appearance of a blueprint, maybe even of the hotel itself, like they're looking at a blueprint of the hotel. And from the little snippets of dialogue that you hear as you enter, you catch the words rear patio and overhang. It sounds like they're in the beginning stages of maybe expanding the hotel, making the property larger and more accommodating. Upon seeing you come inside, we'll say that Kate kind of arrives there first. Clemens nods his head, as he always does. You feel a, wa a wave of warmth wash over you, both from his presence and the fireplace that's crackling in the far corner of the kitchen. Uh, Miss Maury, welcome back. I do have a small note uh, that was dropped off just after you left this morning. Oh. Uh, one of the croupiers brought it at the behest of Chelsea Montero. I was told you would know what the letter's contents were in reference to. Oh, that is great news, thank you. Have a wonderful evening. Oh, um, could I ask you a, a quick question? Sure. Um, you know Mr. Uh, Mr. Claiborne? He arrived uh, yes, about staying in the place. hotel, yes. Are you under the impression that while he may not speak common, he understands it? Uh, I have not quite gotten an impression either way. Understood. Explaining the prices of the hotel has been a challenge. <laughs> <laughs> That's very helpful, thank you. <laughs> Make an insight check. Oh, oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> okay. <laughs> 15. 15. Uh, you brought up the name Gujak, but you can see the gears kind of turning in Bassett's head, and you get the impression that maybe the two of them had a conversation earlier today, him and Gujak, uh, oh. Bassett and Gujak, or that he saw Gujak maybe leaving or coming. Like, you can see him just sort of think about something that happened oh. earlier in the day. But mm -hmm. you Doesn't just... seem suspicious just thinking about it. Um, like Yeah, that, that as soon as you mention the name, he kind of remembers sort of maybe a, a okay. little interaction that happened earlier in the day. Okay. So as you're sort of looking at the note there, sort of clumping a boots behind you, and Morna, you come in right after her. Ms. Maury. Um, hey. And she's gonna nod to Clemens, um, and then sort of take Kate by the elbow, and sort of quietly say, uh, like, not 
Not like that. <laughs> <laughs> sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> a gentle elbow tip. Yes. Um, the boy on the wagon with the Tyrones, he's gone missing down a, a mine. <laughs> Are you okay? Yes, but we must hurry. <laughs> I, I, I have a feeling it's been a really long day it's for you. It's been an excruciatingly long day. You've we no idea. We walked across that bridge and it didn't oh, look good. Oh, good gods, yes. It's only been a couple of minutes for you to get to Paramount, so you still have 20-something minutes. You're not, like, trying to pull okay. it out the door. Have you seen um, Doxley and Ilian? Um, uh, I was with Ilian an hour and a half ago oh. or so. Okay. Um, he, he, he was heading to the, like, like heathen, I think. Uh, all right. Um, perhaps we wait for them? I'm sure they'll want to be involved. Oh, absolutely, yes. And after a moment, Mr. Tyroon, <laughs> welcome back. Thank you. Uh, really? <laughs> Dinner time. Uh, no, not not quite. And I'll also... <laughs> no, <laughs> shut up. No, uh, sort of, <laughs> get the man. Sort of pull him in. Again, not to really alarm yeah. people, but be like, um, the boy on, on the wagon. Um, Wes? The, the cute little... Yes. Yeah. He's gone missing, and we have to go and rescue him. What direction? Ah, uh, the west. I'll meet you out there, and just head off to the west. <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna. I'm going I'm 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 You get to the bridge, you're like, where did Ilya go? I'm, I'm going. It's West. No, He's it, out of here. I'm out. I'm wait, fucking I'm, gone. I'm going. Through the cusp. And <laughs> yeah. He's out of here. <laughs> you gone. <laughs> As he walks through the, the door, his board is like, but, was there a space we were meeting? <laughs> just, just, do you know? Come here, please. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Details. Do you, Alien, details. Do you know where your sister is? No, uh, I haven't seen her. Um, I can go find her really quick. <laughs> Unless you have some telepathy with her, then I don't know what, uh, let us all look together. Do y'all not have telepathy yet? Yet? Just seems like something y'all would no, have. No, I... Uh, Mr. Clemens, Doxley hasn't gone up to our rooms or anything. Not, she has not been back recently, no. Um. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> and, and we'll go out into the street okay. kind of thing. Mm -hmm. um, Are you sure you're all right? I'm fine. You don't need to rest or anything? Uh, no, I very badly need to rest, but it's fine. <laughs> okay. Uh, um, do you guys, you guys have rope and, and, and... I have rope and a grappling hook. All right. Yeah. Great. He fell down a mine? Well, we don't know if he's fallen, but he's going to a mine. Their chance of falling is always... What about TC? Um... He will meet us at the bridge. His father is going to accompany us. He knows where the boy is headed. Okay, so we should sure hurry. Gonna... <laughs> <laughs> dad. We should hurry. So, so um, as you guys are stepping out, we're going to rewind back a little bit. So you were leaving Excavation on Avanda. Were you headed in the direction of Paramount? Of, yeah. In the direction of Paramount? Sure. So we're moving back a little bit, but as you get closer to Paramount, there are uh, people converging from all angles, and they're all a lot of them are carrying large rocks, and you've seen this before. They're kind of <laughs> lumping them down to be arranged in a little circle, kind of so that the fire can be started and I the bonfire guess. can uh, start for the evening. You see that homes and establishments that are on the main strip here <laughs> have allowed, bless you, have allowed people to, <laughs> bless you, tuck boulders. <laughs> oh my God, <laughs> Anthony. <laughs> all right, that's the last one you get. <laughs> have allowed boulders to be tucked into the alleyways in between so that people can easily access them when the time comes. There's one woman who seems to be a part of this process, but she's currently a bit of a hindrance more than a help. She's seated on one of the stones, but it's not quite in the right spot to line up with the rest of the circle. And each time someone approaches to kind of suggest relocating it, she kind of angrily waves them off. She's half or maybe three quarters in the bag, and she's indiscriminate in her bad-mannered heckling when someone gets close. People are ignoring her for the most part, and you get the sense that she's known to some. People don't, there's a lot of eye rolling and head shaking more so than people like snapping back at her or escalating the conflict in any way. So she's kind of shouting people as like, fucking short ass fucking dwarf, fuck you. Fucking beardless little bitch, fuck you. <laughs> Dwarf kind of walks by, and someone rides by on a horse. Yeah, fuck you too, and fuck your horse. <laughs> Fucking saddle sore, bow legged bastard, looking like you shit your pants. <laughs> Fucking, fucking walk on, shitty boy. <laughs> 
and you get a little bit closer. <laughs> and she notices you. Do I? Look who it is. Queen of the fucking sea, fucking Tyrone trash. Pile of garbage walking around on two fucking legs. She ain't the fucking trash as she is. <laughs> Doxy's gonna approach. <laughs> Stinks like fucking trash when you get close. Fishy fucking trash. Oh. Ooh. What's your name, honey? She kind of says, uh, You don't fucking recognize me? <gasps> Do I? Give me an intelligence check. Straight intelligence. Oh, check. God. How dare you? Come on, <laughs> kidding? Not a dog. check to do that. <laughs> Nat 20, let's go! Oh, holy. That was That's awesome. your dice! That was That's awesome! Your dice. <laughs> you do recognize this one. That's woman. right, yeah, you do. She's a human in her, physically, she's a human in her 30s. She has this kind of short, hacked away at sandy brown hair. Like she, you know, took a blade and just kind of sliced it instead of manicuring it or carefully cutting it. And you recall that. This woman looks familiar because you think her family had a couple of fishing vessels that used to sail back in the Soulscarp Bay, back in Peron. Oopsie. But the Tyroons, not you specifically, but the Tyroons sank these ships in the harbor when the Thorps, she is a Thorp, that's her family name, they refused to play ball regarding, you know, paying certain fees or taxes to use the harbor. And this woman in particular, if you're not mistaken, was at the time, this was a little while ago, it was the daughter of the main two, and this girl's name is Polly Thorpe, if you remember correctly. You feel like you've heard your parents both mention the Thorpes in general and and her as well. And when you say they didn't pay like the taxes and stuff, you're talking about <laughs> our little levy. Grifting, we, yes, yes, not okay. like a thorpe. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Just like, trying to figure out who the baddie is. Yeah, like, oh, you wanna park your boats in our harbor, we need, we get a little piece of action, and so. But that was nasty. A little common arrangement. <laughs> that was a common arrangement, yes. But from what you can remember, like, they were a very small sort of fishing operation, like, like levying a tax on something like that. Is, <laughs> that's not like stealing from people who are rich and can afford it. Mm -hmm. you know? So they they were squeezing some some family men and women. Wow. Mm -hmm. Ah, yeah. Polly, Polly Thorpe. Oh, shit. <laughs> Fucking knew you recognized me. Oh, how could I forget such a face? How are your folks? Damn. <laughs> Fucking, you fucking ruined someone's life. Oh, God. Fucking whole family. Don't even fucking think about it again. Like, like it's nothing. Yeah, well, you're fucking nothing here. All fucking nothing. Not a hint of lies in that. Why'd you fucking do that to me? Why'd you fucking do that to my mom and my dad? Didn't You didn't make enough money running the harbor? You had to take it from me? the problem with all you small vessel families. You always think it's personal. It's never personal. I had to leave my home. Come out here. Tell me it's not personal. Fuck you, fuck you. Fuck you, fish girl. Stay around, Polly. As you're kind of walking away, she gives you kind of one last retort. I'm gonna tell everyone who comes to town who you are. Try to outrun that bitch. Get what's fucking coming to you. You'll be doing me a favor, Polly. Oh shit. Keep walking. As you pass by the circle of stones and you're getting to the front of Paramount, the door to Paramount swings open very quickly and your three companions minus TC emerge very quickly out of the thoroughfare. So you guys kind of come together at Great. the same time. Ah, Doxley. We're going west. <laughs> Doxley almost doesn't even clock that you're talking to her. She is 
focused on other stuff. Give me a perception check, actually. Mm. Okay. Uh, eight. Okay. Doc, <laughs> about your business. Yeah. <laughs> Go on. <laughs> Doc, say, are you all right? Yeah, what's up? Is it dinner? No, uh, well, mm. uh, Wesley, uh, the, the boy, the one on your wagon, he's gone missing. Let's walk and talk. All right, I gotta, are we getting into a fight? I gotta get my Maybe. stuff. We're going into a mine. Two minutes. Okay. Two minutes. Okay. Well, wait. Again, you have a little bit of time here. Like it's been only a couple of minutes. So if you go to the bridge, you're gonna be waiting. We have to go west. 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 as you want. Where the walking west. Turned. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, yeah, just running upstairs, yeah. getting sure. up my ship. Yeah, you can get your equipment. Take it back. Yeah, because you had changed into your sort of casual attire, right? At one point. Yeah. Was there something else? No. I'm just gonna shake it off and come downstairs. As we're waiting, um, Morna's gonna go. He he did say it would be approximately twenty minutes, so perhaps. <laughs> His father. Yes. Okay. So I uh, I guess if people do need a, a moment to gather themselves, mm-hmm. they can. But... Mm, I'll just wait by the bridge. If I, if I were him, he'd probably want to be there quicker than twenty minutes, just giving us some time. So. I would think so. Docs is already coming back down the stairs. Right. <laughs> I had, as soon as Docs leaves there, I want to start. Sure. You guys are walking uh, through the thoroughfare. And, and I'll sort of tell them like what was relayed to us, yeah, which is yeah. why, and sort of explain like why I was being quiet about it. Like, mm. we're just there to rescue the boy. We know nothing of the bison situation. Ugh. Yeah, she hit some of the key points, just to recap. Like, the mine is owned by bison, but it's supposedly not in use anymore, but for some reason bison didn't want people going down there, which is why Rufus' dad is sort of worried that, that Wes might get into trouble there, so. Mm. If bison doesn't want us going down there, we definitely have to go down there. <sighs> Miss Mori. <laughs> just because someone says don't go somewhere doesn't immediately mean Go there. Did you find something so wonderful in the goblin basement? You said it was a horror. I don't want to know. Well, actually, wait. Um... <laughs> <laughs> wait a minute. Mr. Tyrone, you have changed your tune. But just while we're waiting, I actually now would like to know if. Did, what did you see down there? Oh, God. Um. Uh. Did, would I, do I know what, like, nil, the word nilbog? Nilbogism, yeah. It, yeah. You guys had talked about it afterwards yeah. as well, okay. so yes. And also there were goblins afflicted with nilbogism yeah. outside as well. I know but I never would have it. seen one that was that dis- No, that one was in a particularly, like that yeah. one was near death and yeah. sort of almost deteriorating before your very eyes. Big old fart bag. Uh, <laughs> I don't, just revisiting it, I don't know. There was a, a real, we're just gonna look him up and down for that. Nasty. Um, the smell, I remember. Sad looking, on death's door, goblin that was just falling apart in a different state of mind, um, farting, burping, all that yummy stuff. Did you happen to pick up anything? Any like I, m- religious trinkets? It was all religious trinkets. That's that's everything that was down there. And you didn't bring any back. I mean, not that they were cursed or anything, but yeah. it's not something I wanted to put my hands on. That's fair. All right. You looking for something? Uh, yeah, uh, may have been in that basement. Maybe. She didn't somewhere. say there were religious trinkets down there. How did you know that there were? Uh, well, I spoke with Mr. Montero today, and oh. uh, we spoke a tiny bit about that basement, and that pretty much everything would probably be destroyed down there. Um, so I was just curious. Did everything go well with your chat? Uh, uh, it was it was all right. It was all right. Was he honest? <laughs> yeah, I think he was, as far as I can tell. Heston, <laughs> waiting for a moment. Do you have a moment here on the bridge where you kind of lean against the railings, kind of looking up and down the thoroughfare, looking for any signs of either Rufus or TC? You're still with them as well. You were following along. Oh, great. Yeah. Oh, cool. yeah. Great. Yeah, because they didn't leave until you came back down. Can I let them know something real quick before okay. we get... I didn't realize I was with you guys. Yeah, you were following along. Um, yeah, I'd also like to not 
piss off Bison at the mm. moment um, while we're waiting. Morna, if you didn't mind, I sort of volunteered you to do a task for them in the morning, um, seeing as you're a skilled stonemason and stuff. That would be three tasks, Mr. Ren. <laughs> what? Three. It doesn't matter. <laughs> Why did you volunteer just, just me task. for a task? Just Yeah, just one, though. Yeah. Why did you want, what is the task? Well, all right, I think it's time. Has everybody figured out what the town meeting was about at yes. this point? Yes. I've heard a bit. Damn it. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a, it's a, there was, a, they found like a statue. Yes. Right. Oh. Bringing it up. Did you not, you just said you knew what. No, the, no, you want, uh, Morris help. Uh, identifying the statue. statue stone? Well, yeah, you keep talking about you're a skilled stonemason, and look, they voted to to move it. Weird vote. And uh, yes, Josie told me so. Oh, great. So we've all, we all, we all know this information. Yeah. Yes, coming up, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> great. yeah. All on the same page. Oh, yeah. Same page. Everybody. So only fucking all. idiots. <laughs> <don't know. laughs> God damn it. Well, listen, <laughs> how I see it is while the iron is hot with bison, do a couple more things for him. And if I had asked you beforehand, you might have said no. So I just did it first before there was a chance of you not saying you would do it. So if you just want to take a look at it, I promised nothing. But if you just want to look at it so we could possibly know what it is and what it's about. What if I cannot identify it? I don't care if you identify it. I want an excuse to go and look at it. Yeah. Oh, God. Just make up some kind of rock if you can't tell what it is, I you know? I will not make up a rock. <laughs> I'm sure I will know what kind of rock. Oh, I'm sure you will How too. Valuable. I'm sure you will too. Um, Look, if this thing gonna has, put her head in her head. if this thing has anything to do with why Broncolo is the way that it is, and it's possibly a religious thing, I don't necessarily wish to be known as Bison's man. There are repercussions from being in someone's pocket in town, a town like this. Okay, so we'll do a job for Izzy next. Where are we at in our round of job? Oh, we have to do the cycle of Just it. A Daphne. Just just pitch yourself as a as a um a free like a consultant. You're you're a rock exactly. consultant. You're yeah. not a bison rock. gal. Yeah, and where it will be your security to make sure you get through the wheel, all right. And you know things about religion, so maybe you'll know some things about this weird ass statue. You're gonna kill it. You're gonna nail it. And even if you don't know anything, you that's lie. not the point. Okay. No, don't lie. I, I don't know about lying. Oh, but oh. that's not the point. <laughs> The point is just to be able to go see it and see what it's about. Okay, why do you care what it is about? Because if it has anything to do with why Broncolo is the way that it is, and they're gonna dig it up, that could change what Broncolo is. That's a variable. Yeah. Okay. Ugh. Got it. I'll do it. Fuck. Good, because I already said that you would. Oh, and uh, gold. Great. I collected our gold for doing the, um, that... Crazy. Stop thing. Yeah, so Great. 100 gold for each of you. And, uh. Oh, for Kate, too. Kate? Not even I, at the job. I wasn't there. <laughs> oh, yeah. He didn't give you that. Oh, oh yeah. Oh, <laughs> oh, 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 More bags. More bags. Sorry, sorry. sorry. You can um, watch me count mine. <laughs> but, uh, well, he also bad. expressed uh, a weird admiration. He could have been lying about how his nephew was sort of handled. <laughs> And thinks that somebody. Admiration? Yes, I was. Great, I was expecting the worst, but that's wonderful. Well, he could have been lying. What did y'all do? Uh, well, this one here decided that it would be too easy to just walk him back to town and decided to. What a, was it? Slice. A message needed to be sent, and I also told him what would happen if he kept doing things. So I sliced up his legs, his Achilles. He couldn't walk home. Both of them. Two. It was important. And I said I would do it, so I did. So he said he had somebody, he, he had room in his arsenal for somebody with your level of violence, but that okay. could just be a, a trick to get you to admit that you did it, because I didn't say who did it. I'm not shying away from it. Anyone who wants to give us a job should know that they aren't fucking around with anybody, so. The Goryonan really does mean business. Let's. So anyway, you can do it if you want, but I, I'm not responsible for it if you do, and it costs some. Mm, a sure. bunch of mean people. What? What? <laughs> Was that directed at us? That's what you told me. <laughs> <laughs> Kate is gonna start gonna cracking up. Got him. 
This is what friends do, right? <laughs> I have that. engaged the ribbing. <laughs> <laughs> she, uh, yeah, she's uh, especially playful. And you feel Doxley. I'm not looking at Doxley. I'm not looking at Doxley. I'm looking at Morna, actually. <laughs> like, what the fuck are you doing? Yeah, you but did she, it. She's you not even paying attention. She's looking at Kate because Kate is clearly engaging in the ribbing. <laughs> so Morna's like, oh, okay, okay. I'm doing it. I'm doing it. Let's focus up. Let's focus up. Let's just stop. <laughs> And with a moment here as you wait for TC to return, that's where we're going to take a little break. Oh okay. my god! We'll pick it, we'll reverse the time just a little bit, we'll pick it up at the, uh, at the cemetery, oh and then boy. we will converge and go from there. Oh my god! <laughs> as the Goryonon's reputation continues to be <laughs> dragged through the mud yep. from Be-o. all angles. <laughs> <laughs> Who said that? <laughs> you did. You did. <laughs> Ooh, baby. Wow. All right. Well done, everyone. Um, We will pick it right back up there. Um, Enjoy the puzzles, as always. Mm. Enjoy If you're watching on TikTok, we'll just go offline for about 15 minutes while we take a quick break, and we'll come back for part two of some D&D. If you want, watch puzzles on Twitch. The website's down there. And the um, Powerball. And the Powerball. But if not, just give us a follow, and we'll be back online in like 15 minutes. All right. Thank you all. See you there, everybody. Bye. Bye. Oh, my God. Wait, this this is my job. Bye. Bye. See you in a little bit. Don't. The Shut wait. up about the girth. Uh, are we live? Notch is out of number four! Yeah. Yeah. Cheers. 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 Cheers! When Maeve said that outside the door, of like, maybe you should use that on someone who's closer to you. In Alien's mind, it was like, like TC? Raven or TC? <gasps> oh. Can you choose? I can't make the truth like between my cheese. <laughs> <laughs> Does everybody have an alignment? Chaotic horny. <laughs> <laughs> don't we fucking no, no, know you don't even tell us. No, don't Shut tell it. us. It's so irritating. We don't tell know. us. You bring it up every night. <laughs> I don't even think this is <laughs> like I said. We have a really night. mature group that can handle this. <laughs> what do you think of first personality or backstory? Mix of both. Um. If I would say function in the story first. What's Scary. fun is that you teach the players that sounds mean certain things. She begins to sponge his back. This no. is stage direction. Do you have a choice that your character regrets the most so far? All right, everybody. Have a wonderful night. Have a wonderful week. Uh, We'll see you next week. Welcome back, everybody, to Tabletop Notch and Chapter 16 yeah. of Broncolo. Ooh, yes. Things are cooking here in the thoroughfare as we uh, head west to find <laughs> yeah. west. west? <laughs> um, Rufus has told us that his son has gone missing, possibly down one of Bison's old abandoned mines, and need to retrieve him, or at least find out what he was up to. Old and abandoned. Old. But before we get to that, as always, mm. Yep, here we go. Here we uh, go. Skybrush, the web, resubscribe, Tony, two to seven stream streak. Oh, Only seven? Yeah, Dukin Booty Cheeks is giving out subs and under, subs and subs. 11 mad. subs, Walker Bow, resubscribe, resubscribe. Dukin Schwartz, another sub. Hartman, resubscribe. Lord Lost, resubscribe. Wrangler, Spider Wrangler, resubscribe. Lace, resubscribe. Ali Slayer, 100 bits. Helljack, 800 bits. Jay Brownie, 500 bits. Ali Slayer, 100 bits. Wizard Ink, gifted a sub. Shades yeah. of Blue, resubscribe. Oh my gosh, Shades of Blue, you've been around for forever. 53 wow. months. Oh. Can you believe that? Wow. Um, 53 month streak. <laughs> wow. I don't understand it. streaks. <laughs> Drodka uh, cheered 500 bits. The, the H Thanks. is silent. Good it's ass. not Drodka, the ex Blodka. Oh, it's not. Oh. Drodka. <laughs> Did you say um. Walker Bow in there? That's from like one of my favorite book series ever, if that's what you said. Did I say? Yeah, Walker B-O-E. Walker Bow from the Shannara series? <laughs> oh, the wow. Talismans of Shannara? Wow. He is a been... wonderful character. Netherlands! <laughs> <laughs> sorry, sorry. I'm sure it's awesome. Dude, yeah, I'm yeah. sure it's Booty awesome. Cheeks? I think yeah. I have the first book. I just haven't read it yet. Of what, think there's a lot of different series of like within the Shannara. <laughs> sort of Shannara? Or is it the Talisman? That sounds like a know. great topic for not to Yes, yeah, that's true. That's true, sorry. <laughs> fair, fair, fair. Let's save West, guys. Yeah. We'll All right. Eh. Before we convene back at the bridge, we're going to follow TC over to the Broncolo Cemetery, where, with a task still in mind, crosses over the bridge and takes a left there. When you get to the bridge initially, 
the lack of additional dwellings that block your view let you see, once again, there's that lantern that's hanging over the front steps of the mortuary, the same as you saw when you were with Morna there before. In addition, the shutters of the windows are not yet closed and allows you to discern that there is light on the interior as well. Okay. Signs that someone may indeed be waiting within. You can't help but briefly run your eyes across the tombstones toward the grave of Winslow Ridgewater, mm. which even to an untrained eye does look a little more freshly dug than most of the other plots. <laughs> Still, to your knowledge, no one has complained. And even if they wanted to, what would they say? Yeah. <laughs> you didn't take any valuables from the corpse. You didn't vandalize the epitaph. A victimless crime, unless you believe in the sanctity of the dead. But what's done is done. Just as she did when you were watching from the perimeter, when you were uh, sort of taking a moment there to just scout the area, a very slight elven woman emerges to smoke a cigarette on the porch. And each time she takes a drag, the crease lines in her cheeks sort of accentuate the folds in her cheeks. And beside her, you see no other signs of, beside her, you see no other signs of life. There's nobody visiting like a deceased loved one's grave, nor any signs of the man that you followed here in the very, very first time you came. So it's pretty quiet out here. As soon as you get across the water, a little bit of the silence of the night takes you and you see her out on the porch. <sighs> She's out on the porch. Yep. Okay. As I'm, um, as I'm getting closer, um, I'm gonna take out the letter feeling heavy in my pocket here and I'm gonna you also just take out walk back and forth on the porch take out my little perfume and I'm gonna like give it just a little sure uh. wave it off <sighs> make my way you head to the mortuary yep. itself Great. Kind of towards so it. she sees you coming I mean yep. you're it's very there's nobody here so you can yep. hear your footsteps and you start to head in the direction and she sees you kind of takes one more Drag. Need help with the body. You'll have to come back in the morning. Forgive me. Um, I don't have a whole lot of time. Uh, I'm going to leave this here with you. With I don't get much in the way of mail. Please, I... I will say only that I endeavored to follow directions. But the couriers were much too curious and not enough curie for me. <laughs> yes, I think that's supposed to come from them, isn't it, love? <gasps> yes. Anything to save a copper, eh? <gasps> All right then, hand it over. This is this is something else <laughs> that I want to hand you the note. She takes it from you. And without hesitating at all, she doesn't put it in a pocket or anything, she walks over to the door, and she, with her foot, she lifts up the doormat, and she slides it under, lets the doormat fall on top of it. Thank you. And I'm gonna turn. And she walk. nods. What? And walk off. What? what? <sighs> um, yeah, kind of quickly make my, not quickly, uh, <laughs> briskly make my way back kind of around to come uh, 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 seeing if I see anybody that I recognize. So you get there the a little bit earlier than okay. them, we'll say. Okay. Was there anything else you wanted to do in the in the sort of moments before? No, I just, I wanted to know if they saw me coming from uh, any direction. Uh, no, I'll say okay. they, they didn't. Um, so yeah, as you guys were having that conversation as you were getting closer to the bridge and now TC's coming over and you guys are now sort of converging at that very moment. So it might just be a couple more minutes based on Rufus's timeline when he might be showing up, so. All right, you've gathered the whole, all the troops I see. I'm ready to go. I thought it was best. Excellent job. I got a hold of a climbing kit, uh, as well as a healing potion, just in case. Good thinking. That was wise. All right. Uh, sorry, the dinner has to be postponed. I'd say this is worth it. Uh, I imagine Morna filled you in that uh, we are doing this for Mr. Diamond, and that yes. we are feigning ignorance about any, <laughs> as far as we know, this is just rescuing a boy. Yes. And let, let Mr. Diamond take the ire of, <laughs> of Bison. Uh, a diamond might be a little rough, by the way. Uh, perhaps a little drunk. Okay. Just a heads up. Uh, Don't let him go in the mine. I'd say that's for the best. Break his oh. fucking neck. Very good point. Yeah. 
Diamond hasn't been refined. It's a little rough. Ah, I was a pun. Well done. <laughs> Wink. <laughs> <laughs> Couple more minutes pass. <clears throat> Finally, you see Rufus coming from the east through the thoroughfare, and he looks like, similar to TC, he's gathered a few things. He has a bag slung over his shoulder, there's a rope coiled around his shoulder, he looks like he has a small short sword that he's tucked into a scabbard down by his waist, so he has a few items that he, whatever he could kind of gather on short notice. Some of it's kind of, uh, he has a piece of leather armor that's sort of draped over, but it's ill-fitting. You can tell that he borrowed it, that it's not his piece of armor, that clearly anyone around his sort of tent, he asked for whatever he could get grabbed it, and now he's kind of on his way back. So, he shuffles kind of back up to you. <sighs> if I were you, yes. that's... Thank you. Thank you. Now, uh, before we get moving, uh, I just want to say, uh, I know you got little to gain, but I'll say this. My wife went through the gate a while back, because she couldn't resist the allure of items of extraordinary origin. And if she fell down that mine shaft and they just covered her up after she fell, it might be something left behind to be of use to you. I can't guarantee it, but whatever's there is yours. I'm not looting your dead wife's body. She'd want you to be paid for what you're about to do. Let's cross that bridge when we come to it, I right? Maybe time is of the essence. Yes, yes. You ready to go? Let's yes, go. Let's Lead do it. Way. All right, I, I'll show you the way, and uh, we're going to follow the road for a little bit, and then we'll peel off. Sounds great. I know where it is, because we came close, giving it a look before we came back to town. All right. All right, let's go. Again, he sort of hefts the rope that's on his shoulder, begins to briskly kind of walk forward. Matt, I have a yep. 50 feet of rope mm -hmm. in my backpack. Does yeah. can, can we say that's in my backpack currently? Yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah. I just feel like it's a lot of rope and I want to- Yeah, the, 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 the magical fantasy yeah. backpacks <laughs> Great. carry quite a bit of anything that's not like a- hanging off the side like. of the old knapsack. Yeah, it could mm -hmm. just be hanging. I'm always carrying 50 feet of rope. I think a climber's kid has 250. Foots, right? Uh, does it? Does it think it might be right? uh, I think I might okay, be right too. Okay, I have a hundred feet of rope. I think I might have like four hundred feet of rope. Pretty sure it's two fifty feet length. <laughs> it feels strangely foreign to leave the camp behind, heading west. For most of your exploration has been on the opposite end of the valley, further into the downwheel. You recall your initial approach to town. The horses exhausted after being pushed to their absolute limits, fleeing the cleric in the cusp. You wonder if you'll ever learn, ever learn more about what drew its eye, or whether it was just bad fucking luck. Even by only the light of the moon, the stoic beauty of the valley never ceases to amaze. Though Rufus's brisk pace leaves you less time to kind of take it in and appreciate it. He walks a decent bit ahead of the rest of you, perhaps by design, so you maybe can't see the tears that are forming in his eyes, but he's also just keeping a quick, he occasionally will kind of look over his shoulder, but he's just trying to get there as quickly as he can, separate it a little bit from the pack. You have a moment while you follow the road to chat with each other or ask him any questions or just kind of simply appreciate the unmatched silence of this area. It's far from any kind of babbling brooks, chittering creatures, talkative thoroughfares sort of the open expanse of the valley here before you. How's he walking? Is he like stumbling or anything? He's not stumbling because he's not quite that drunk. It was more evident when you were talking to him. It was a little bit of a slur. He was just kind of a little out of sorts, which could be chalked up to, you know, the events taking place, but he seems physically mostly okay. You know, there might be some coordination issues if he had to do something difficult, but walking is not a problem. He's not like tripping over himself on the way there. Okay. Did he say how far this is? Like, I think he said to you guys like 20 yeah, minutes 20 out of town. Yeah. If there's a moment, I'm gonna tap TC and pull him just over by me or wherever. Sure. Uh, TC, mm. um, my mind is mostly on making sure we save this boy. Mm. But it comes to my attention, um, when 
We did that job for the Monteros, and you went into that basement. Aye. Could you tell me a little bit more about what you saw down there? Did you bring anything up? Maybe. <laughs> okay. If you did, might I see what you have? Is there anything in particular you're looking for? Anything that you brought up from that basement. Didn't you take a number of steps down yourself? You didn't think to look around yourself when you were there? Only brief enough to make sure Niall wasn't there, and I was up, because like I said, that's what I said I would do for that mission. So what has reignited your... <laughs> I've heard that there were perhaps trinkets down there that may assist me in something I'm looking for. You wouldn't happen to have talked to the Monteros, have you? I did, earlier. Oh. An hour ago, Mr. Montero. And that's where I found out that these things would have been. So the people that we explicitly told we would not go into that basement now I... know that we have been in that basement. Is that what you're saying? I never said anyone went into the basement, but he told me that things that we were look that I might be looking for would not have made it after that fire. What I'm saying is, is I'm, am I going to get in trouble for having taken something? Are you going to turn me in? No, I just, if you could show it to me, I'll even give it back. I just need, I would like to see if there's anything there. I might be chasing something that's not even there. And TC will kind of very slowly like, <gasps> and like he'll hold it out at a distance. Chain there. Bring it around my finger a little bit. Now, what do you think is inside? Um, would there by any chance be a man in some armor or with a sword? How the hell do you know what this is? <laughs> what is it? Is there a word? Yes. Can I please see it, TC? <laughs> I'll hold it out. <laughs> and I'll put it back away. Is that what you're looking for? I suppose, yeah, but I still don't know what the heck I was looking at just now. But, uh, I'm glad to know that he wasn't lying to me, Mr. Montero. Mm. Um, does that mean anything to you by any chance? Does it mean anything to you? Yeah, a great deal. What do you... I wish I could tell you what it means to me. I honestly don't know, I just know it means a lot. Would you like it? If you gave it to me, I wouldn't turn you in, TC. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> Let me know what you find out about the word. All right, I will. Um, this word was found on a well up by the gnome camp and on a murdered body, on a clinker. Well, maybe now I am glad you've taken it from me. <laughs> Perhaps. <laughs> That's all I know. All right, well, be careful. I will. But how long ago was this person murdered? I gather a couple of months, a month ago. It's months ago, mm, like yeah. multiple months ago. Couple. My memory of picking it up in the basement, I mean, was this something that had a layer of dust on it? Did it seem... Um, like a little bit. It yeah. doesn't seem like it's been there for ages, ages but... but... I couldn't tell you how long it was down there, but yeah, there was so much stuff down there, it was hard to tell, like, in particular, how long it could be a clue in a murder. <laughs> yeah. Um, thank you, TC. It really actually means a lot that you have this. For once, thank you for taking something that we shouldn't have taken. You, this was a great boon. You seem to know much more about it than I, so if you get some use out of it. Yeah. Blessed be. Anything else while the two of them were talking? I think I'm gonna <laughs> nudge over to Morna, yeah. Um, do you wanna talk about what happened on the bridge? What do you mean? Was there a, were the prisoners trying to escape? There were a, a lot of bodies when we crossed over it. Oh, um, yes, it was all a bit, a bit of a blur. There seemed to be a sea elf who I'm not sure. 
I think TC got a better look at it. What do you know? Basically nothing. I just it seemed like a a, a lot of carnage. Oh. More than more than we've seen since we got here for sure. Just wondering Would if there's you... unrest at the so prison. Or... There were no survivors to tell you what had happened. Uh, there were some guards, but they were very tight-lipped. There were some guards. Hmm. Ah. Clinkers. Yes. Well, it looked as if there might, there might be. Her vision sort of goes <laughs> oh like my God. black for a second. Um. Uh. I'm glad. I'm glad of it. So it didn't seem like it, like they were the prisoners were breaking out or. One did, one did break out, yes, but it wasn't like he was trying to free his fellows. Um, he made a run for it on his own. I guess he called the uh, sea creatures to him to aid. Oh. I didn't really see it, I only saw the aftermath, and I did see a man run, but he didn't seem to assist the people next to him. Mm. That's a shame. Not that the prisoners are innocent, but it's a shame so many folks had to die. Yes, it was awful. We were told to run and get help, and uh, I guess help arrived, so. I'm glad you're okay. Thanks. She, like, tries to sort of, like, does it seem like Kate's still mad at me, I guess, is <laughs> what <laughs> she wants to do. Like Kate mad at her. <laughs> It seems that Morna's near-death experience has has caused Kate to feel sympathetic towards her, okay. as well as the joke she made earlier mm. was very endearing. She's maybe small mad, not big okay. mad. Okay, okay, small, yeah. <laughs> okay, so that's Tense. good, but everything else, Morna is like, she feels like she wants to throw up. Can I see and that? And she, <laughs> um, okay. how much vomit do I see coming out of <laughs> She sort eyes. of like <laughs> stuffs it down. Brown. 17. 17. I mean, she looks uneasy. And she seems like she's leaving parts out, but you don't necessarily know that that's like, she's keeping a secret. It yeah, might just it seem like, like she's trying to recall it. Yeah, that she like, that happened not that long. I mean, it was a few hours, yeah. but it wasn't like days ago. So yeah. it seems clear that there's more to the story. You know, whether or not you want to push that right now yeah. is up to you, but it seems obvious to you that there's there's more to be told. As soon as Ilian's done talking to DC, I'm gonna like, if I kind of heard, the, you know, a conversation of the bridge, even just in passing. Sure. Ah, um, speaking about the bridge earlier. Yes. There was a, uh, a sea elf prisoner on his way over, uh, and he, he, he must have called all these sea creatures to him in that uh, fish language you all got there. It's a far stretch. Aquan, Mr. Welk. <laughs> A far stretch. Um, I heard two guards. Uh, I don't know if this is someone they were talking about that was dead or alive, but I heard it. I called the name Marcel and Aquan in the same sentence. Um, that might, and I'll describe him. I'll, there was this Aquan, and perhaps that was his name. But yeah. did I see him get away? We we saw him. We yeah, you saw him get out of get his. Away. You didn't see like where he went, but you saw him right. get out of his manacles. Yes, you right. saw him pick the lock. He was. Um, I really Again. wasn't feigning it. I didn't see the beginning of it. I only saw the aftermath. Mm. So he was uh, gurgling and uh, um, making uh, making a fuss on the way over, and then the sea creatures attacked. He had a moment in the in the hullabaloo to get out of his restraints, and who knows where he's off to. But many men died on that bridge. Mona fell. I did. We barely made it out of there. Yes. What were the prisoners wearing? Again? All white. Well, if we see him. Does the name, does anyone recognize the name, Marcel? I don't. We should probably warn the people of Brunk Hollow, no? That a prisoner is on the loose? Huh? Well, they said From the they looks were... of it, he went. He went away, yeah. That, the other way on the bridge, but. He went towards where you were. You know, where we came from the dire wolves and I, all I that. I believe as I fled, I, I told them that it, that one of the prisoners was loose. I, I can't recall now. It was all happening all at once, but uh, I'm sure they have records. Of they, they have the bodies mm. of who they still have. And they said three were unaccounted for. Right. Three. Right. Mm. 
Wh while we're on the subject of, of people to be looking out for, um, whoever didn't hear this already, I saw a man or maybe a ghost in the downwheels. Ghost. Who went by Ramo Klein. Does that Do name I, um, mean anything? It, uh, you two can give me history checks. Oh. It, Doxley does indeed recognize the name. You recognize it because now we've learned a little bit about him. He's sort of a notorious thief, but also very notably a, a pirate. He would so sail around the Soulscar Bay. He, would, he attacked vessels in the Discuna Sea in the Soulscar Bay fairly frequently. He had a terrible reputation among specifically seafaring folk, which is why the Tyroons, your parents certainly knew of him and had harbored quite a bit of hatred for him because he sort of sunk ships, he would mess up business. And then someday, somewhere along the line, a few years ago, you heard that he was, that the clerics got to him, that he was gone. And you never had a problem with him ever again. So you assume that that, that happened. Wouldn't we also maybe view him in a better light because he was causing problems in Skull, Soulscar Bay? And we're like, did we see an increase in our security needs or requests? Your parents tried to leverage that, but it was a weak consolation prize to the fact that he would sink Tyrune ships mm. and rob Tyrune ships with regularity. So whatever convenience he provided by, you know, people wanting your security, he took in spades by, by being a, a, a problem for you guys in the, in the bay. Had I ever seen him before? You've never seen the man, no. Five on my history check. Yeah, you do, yeah I mean, you feel like you've heard it, but in your line of work, that's not a name that came up. You might as yeah, well be a And you to me. far away from his, where he <laughs> tended to operate. <laughs> it's what is history? Empty headed, empty headed. Is. <laughs> it sounds very familiar. What? Ramo Klein, huh? Does that ring a bell for you? A known poltergeist to you? Yeah. You've taken a step away, Elian, you truly have. Yeah, Ramo Klein was a big problem in Paran. Paran? Yeah. What the hell is he doing out here in the woods? Well, apparently he's back from the grave and enjoying himself because last I heard, he was dead. Well, if that person is who they actually say they are, that is. It could very well be some lunatic posing as a dead man. Sorry, he was a ghost? <laughs> he seemed like a ghost. I he seemed ghost. like a ghost. Do you believe in ghosts? Yes. He seemed like a ghost. To, to be like, clear, ghosts exist in this world. <laughs> <laughs> There's no believing in ghosts or not. Can I say? Can I say like like colloquially? Like you know, like he seemed like he he in incorporeal. Uh, more or less like no, <laughs> an incorporeal <laughs> form. No, like a rumor. Oh, just a whisper in the wind. He said that. that. <laughs> That's what I mean. I have no. some. Sorry, I I heard a voice. <laughs> <laughs> I would also add, um, as soon as, when she mentions the name, yeah. you guys have kind of just said it, but your first thought is someone's posing as uh -huh. Ronald Klein because you guys were fairly convinced that he, like people had good reason to believe he was gone because all of a sudden all of that activity just stopped, all the robbing, all the piracy yeah. on the map. So, so that is mm -hmm. your first impression is that someone is pretending to be using the infamous name. The clerics were after him. The clerics got to him. Actually. Did you see a body? No, I never saw the man. But if Solskar Bay one day is a battlefield of sunken ships, and the next day it's peaceful, that's because he's dead. Would he not have reason to want to disappear for a while if the clerics were after him? Man was at his peak. Why would you disappear then? All Bigger I'm saying challenge. is... Huh? Bigger challenge somewhere else? We were being hunted down and fired, fireballed. Exploded. <laughs> Choose the technical term. Uh, I would just be wary. It sounds like someone was pulling your leg. Yeah, he almost... Did he threaten you? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, he almost offed me on the spot. Oh, God. And why didn't he? Guess I intimidated him. Ah, <laughs> I see. <laughs> so I should try that. I come across it. No, no, you should not. All right. Anyone who's pretending to be Ramo Klein is a lunatic. <sighs> Do what he says, give him what he wants, and move on. Dang. Wow. Glad I brought him up. 
Does he run solo or did he have a crew? When he was sailing, he had a crew, but he would sometimes, you know, if he was trying to be discreet, he could run solo as well. But yes, he had a ship of, of crewmates. Sure. Had his resources, but wasn't afraid to go out on his own. <laughs> he specifically wanted me to tell people that he was back. So if mm. if you if y'all want to spread a rumor or start whispering that, I don't know. Had you ever seen him in person? No. Ah, a description wouldn't help you uh, solidify a lie or not. Though. Just so we know, if someone comes saying they're Ramo Klein and they don't match, what did this person look like? If multiple people are impersonating, you can describe him to them. He was a wood elf, and you know he was using that. He had that. That's he took right. that bottle at one point. Uh, uh, he he had long yeah. Oh, ha ha, I found Long it. red hair. Um, <laughs> uh, an, old, an oldie, but a goodie. Brown hair. Um, he, he was taking um, uh, breaths out of something. Um, like he needed help breathing. Um, he, he had a huge crossbow. Mm. Biggest crossbow I've ever seen. Mm, great. <laughs> I like the cut of his jib. Not like that, TC. Not like that. And, and what elf? I mean. Right, so if Leather armor. someone else that's a human comes by and says the Rummo clan, at least maybe we know there's a bunch of people impersonating this guy. Huffing air. Yeah, did, did he have a lung issue when he was alive? You can make an arcana check if you want. Oh! <laughs> Please, Anthony. I know, I'm trying. <laughs> 19. <gasps> oh! When the description of what she sounds like, there's something called bottled breath, which what? is a sort of an alchemical sort of oxygen mixture. And it's typically used, uh, its effects are you can like inhale the air and then if you blow out, it makes like a very forceful gale of wind. Like you could blow someone like feet away, like okay. with the force of the wind. But it sounded like he was using it as a way to oxygenate himself, not to <gasps> sort of use the wind. Like he needed the, you know, so some kind of health problem that was he needed the air in the bottles. There. Perhaps because he's he got exploded. He goes. <laughs> <laughs> bottled, bottled air. Could be dangerous. You will have to refrain from using too many metaphors with me. I have been accused of being too literal. So I apologize. I thought you meant a literal ghost, and I was alarmed. That is all right, Morna. Thank you for your communication with me. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> and the tension. <laughs> Lifts, question mark. Just a little. Ladies be. At this point in the conversation, uh, Rufus kind of turns back again, walking quickly, rope over his shoulder. We'll follow the road uh, a bit further, and then we're going to go northward when the trail pivots due west. As I said before, we ain't far, and, and before the town was much of anything... Bison sunk a whole bunch of these little uh, test shafts around the valley to uh, see what the ground's makeup was. And I guess he found that the getting was a lot better in the downwield because they ain't in use no more. Now, I'll tell you when we get close, but we're, we're almost to the bend. Now, you, you said this one's abandoned, yes? Should be. And you've been here recently? Yeah, we came here earlier today. And there was no guard present. Not that we saw. All right. We thought for sure we'd go to Bison and ask if we could go down and he'd say, sure, it's empty. Who gives a shit? Of course, that didn't Perhaps turn out how we hoped. Should have just asked for forgiveness afterwards. Yeah, the thought occurred to me. Well, here we are. Mm. Now, I walked over to EOD after we put everything together and barely got two sentences in before he cut me off. Offered to pay, didn't matter. Offered to have his men escort me down here, didn't matter. From his perspective, I don't know, maybe he thought I was looking to steal something. Didn't get the chance to convince him otherwise. Steal something from an abandoned mind. It just seems strange. I'm of like mind, but like I said, I imagine he wouldn't be how he was about it unless there was something down there. Right. Fuck. Once we get in there, I hope... I hope we resist any temptation to uh, pilfer. After our chat, I imagine I'd be the first person he'd come hunting if something went missing. Your son and your wife are our top priority. My son, first and foremost. Yes, sir. Oh, I got these two and I leave it up to you. He takes the bag off his shoulder, he reaches in, and he takes out what it first looks like, just like sacks, like, like small sacks that you would just 
put an item in, but holes have been cut for eyes oh and a mouth God. hole. And he puts one over his head and it's kind of sagging to the side, but you can see his eyes in his mouth. I don't know if he, if there's someone keeping watch if you didn't want your face seen. I don't see anything wrong with saving a boy from a mine shaft. I wouldn't hide my face from that. All right, I just, I didn't know if anyone was uh, tiptoeing around their relationship with Bison, so I, I, I got him if you want him. Thank you, Rufus. Right. It's very sweet. Yeah, looks good on you. Nobody else, in. Morna? Would you mind? Fucking it. Why? Yes, I will. You can take it off as soon as we're done. She's I'm a sorry, rock. Are you having just her put it on? Yeah. Why? Oh, we'll talk about it later. I'm gonna, I'm gonna keep walking. Let's go. Okay, yes. Let's go. She's gonna <laughs> fucking sack on. <laughs> you constantly have to. It's not a like fitted to your face, so it's constantly like sagging. Yeah, you have to like adjust it. I mean, it's a whole bag. It fits over your All head, she's but. doing is thinking about how Doxley saved her life earlier, so she's doing this because Doxley has asked her. But she's like, fucking. She's been through so much today. Yeah. You continue on forward, and right as it looks like, you can look up ahead, and there's a little bit of moonlight shining that allows you to see. It looks like the road is starting to bend due west, and it sounded like that's where he was gonna deviate from the road. But right before that happens, TC, I need you to make a constitution save. Oh, bro. shit! Oh, man. Hell yeah, baby. Hell that has yeah. gotten a little harder since your last yep. constitution oh, saving. Big throw. mode, big Hell mode. Yeah. Please. Seven. You oh, suffer that's... one level of exhaustion. Fuck. Whoa. Oh, yep. that's bad. So as you're moving along the road, <sighs> you just start to feel the weight of the day settle in. You have disadvantage on ability checks. Me right now. Disadvantage, just ability <laughs> checks. Just ability just checks. Just ability checks, yes. Not attack rolls. No, that's a later one. I, oh. Yeah, I looked it up. Yeah, level one is just disadvantage but on all ability checks. checks. All ability, ability checks. checks. Good, our trap boy has disadvantage <laughs> yeah. on all ability checks. <laughs> Please. <laughs> I know this one. <laughs> I can do it, I can do it. So you continue to follow. Woo! Oh God, yeah. Jesus. <laughs> Sorry. Okay. I'll blow the oh. mic It off. like echoes oh. throughout the valley. <laughs> <laughs> Woo! 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 Straying from the trajectory of the well-worn path here. Bad. You follow Rufus into a highly dispersed forest where often there's more than 10 or even 20 feet between each tree. So plenty of space between them. Thick roots are running along the ground that evidently don't play very nice with each other and they force the trunks of the trees to grow at a distance so that even the biggest branches of the trees seldom touch. There's that, that so they're very kind of, it almost looks like someone who was planting trees and made sure to like give each of them enough space for their root systems. Only a particularly motivated individual would try to bore through this kind of terrain because it's all roots, it's rocks and roots hard beneath your feet. But bison is nothing if not motivated. So it's not too much of a surprise when in the distance you can see a small structure with a peaked roof. And if you look at your little sort of bare bones map that he gave you. <laughs> oh yeah, can you hold it up? Yes. Yeah, so it indicates that there's oh. some kind of little structure above ground that indicates where the gotcha. uh, where the tunnel begins. Okay. You see that little peaked roof, almost like one would build over like a water well, but it's much wider and the, it doesn't have that kind of cylindrical stone base that you associate with a well. Something that's helping you make out details even from a distance is that there's at least one lit brazier beside this shed-like framework smoke and sparks spilling into the sky. Evidence that unless Wes is the one who lit it himself, somebody comes out here regularly to great. check, guard, stand outside. Great, great, great. But you see no figures above ground at this time. Oh, shit. Okay. Everybody put on a fucking sack. We have the ability to say we don't know where to rescue a boy and an added bit of deniability that it wasn't us is gonna be helpful. Morna, you've already got one on. I you know, here? and I fucking hate it. <laughs> Give don't me one. Look. I'll take one. I don't want to hide my face for doing something like this. This is nothing to be ashamed of. Even if Bison knew I knew he was coming to his thing, I don't care. It's about safety, Alien. We value your life as well as his. 
All right. Everybody's doing it. You look around at the mismatched, mist-colored satchels that are over each other's heads. Everyone, some people's eye holes are like need to be a little bigger. Like they're clearly cut in haste. These little sort of pockets between each of them. You look around at each other. Get a little closer. And you can see he's kind of blink. He's trying to like shake away whatever lingering bit of sort of inebriation is in his head. It starts getting closer. As you creep closer and closer, small increments, pausing occasionally to watch for a moment, see if there's any changes in the fire or if anybody emerges from that structure, you can start to see, you can start to hear Rufus breathing heavier. (sighs) The reality setting in that he soon may discover if his son is injured or worse. You can practically hear the argument that he's having with himself in his head over whether he made the right choice by getting prepared and recruiting help rather than to sprint out here immediately empty-handed. You can tell that that decision is weighing on him because of course time is of the essence, but if he shows up and he gets himself killed, you know, what was the point? So you can see that he's battling with his own kind of demons in his head. There's only one way to alleviate those doubts. So across the field, everybody kind of moves here. The lack of smaller bushes and plant growth making it surprisingly easy to stay quiet. The ground is very, very hard, so you can just kind of tiptoe and get closer, avoid any unnecessarily unnecessary crunching or rustling underfoot. You start to pick up on the crackling of the brazier. You can hear it now, the wood kind of... Which only further emphasizes the dearth of other sounds. You don't hear voices, no animals, No clattering of someone kind of navigating the tunnels below, underneath. And now you're within 100 feet, 90 feet, 80 feet, getting a little closer as you kind of dart from tree to tree. Um, Two things. Mm -hmm. I'm going to do a healing surge. Okay. (laughs) And, um, Diamond, have you set foot in that shack yet? Is that something you've done? We walked up to it, but I haven't gone down in. All right. We should look for traps before we even go in there. All right. Rufus, I think you shouldn't go into the mine and just watch for us up here. I I understand what this means to you, but- What if he needs me? He needs you alive. You're an amazing father to this boy, Rufus, and I'd like to keep it that way. Give me a persuasion check with advantage. (gasps) Oh, 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 what? That one feels better. <laughs> oh, Ooh, nah, great. Um, pers- wait, you said persuasion? Yep. Uh, eight. Eight. I just, I just, if he needs me, I, I want to be there. Allow us to go in first then. All right, that I can do. I'll stay up top. I'll be the last one down. But if I hear someone call out, I, I want to be there. I understand. Right. Okay. Let's get it. Let's get to getting. All right. You said you're worried about traps. Yes, I'll take a look. All right. Creeping closer. Mm-hmm. Everybody give me stealth checks. Uh, with disadvantage. Advantage, disadvantage. <sighs> 25. Oh, oh shit. Get me in there. Dirty 20. <gasps> Nat 20, let's f- oh. 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 oh, we're Rufus getting that done. had a 17. Wow. <laughs> Four. Oh. <laughs> you clinky, clinky armor boy. Yeah, the, the hardness of the ground is working against you in a little way, because with softer earth, you'd be able to pad it. So there's a little bit of rattling of Villian's armor, but again, as you get closer, the silence all around you makes it so, if there was a foreign noise, you'd probably pick up on it right away. So you don't hear anything, and certainly in response to the clattering of the armor, as you guys get closer, you can, again, hear the crackling of the fire. I would just like to say I got a 22 with disadvantage. <laughs> that oh. is really impressive. Why did you have disadvantage? My armor. We have this talk every time. Oh, cool. <laughs> <laughs> I believe you. <laughs> As you get closer, the exterior structure is barely more than just kind of a raised awning. It's just this little roof that has a couple of poles that are holding it up off the ground. And the moment you step foot sort of under the roof or at least close to it, you can peer over and you can see down the side of the opening that's in the ground here. It's a straight vertical shaft that leads directly down. 
Despite its kind of ominous isolation, it emanates sort of a warm glow from within, indicating that there might be some kind of light source also down below. Fantastic. There's a ladder affixed to the wall of the interior of this shaft, and a rope that's also dangling down. It's tied to the apex of that little roof, so there's a rope going all the way down as well. It seems like it's a rope that's meant for sort of hoisting things up out of the shaft back when it was operational. Though if the diagram you have is accurate, it doesn't seem like they spent too much time here. I mean, that's an extremely small sort of, yes, mine or... Cool yeah, yeah, very, very small. <laughs> One circle. <laughs> As you give it a look, the ladder probably looks a little less sturdy than you'd like. It's a little rotted, a little splintered in a couple places. But between the rope and the ladder, there's you could probably grab something if you started to fall. Mm -hmm. A little bit of a safety net there. Um, would you like to poke around? I will. You may do so. I'm giving an investigation it stone? Check. Is what stone? Like the <laughs> structure like up top here? Nope, it's all wood up top. All right, then I'm not gonna <laughs> bother looking. Five. No traps that you can see. Right. Not that I can see. And you right. can see as you get closer to the edge that Rufus is sort of, you can see him getting kind of antsy. And you see him like maybe winding up to say something. <laughs> Not yet. We're going, we're going. Let's go, come on. Do you want to take the lead, TC, or? <sighs> Uh, I'll, I'll take it. You, you see I'll... TC kind of like blinking hard, like after, you know, looking around like that. Mm -hmm. Morna like... will sort of grab the rope in one hand and the ladder, just sort of like pull the rope into her so that she's climbing with the rope in front of her and she's got two hands on the ladder. As you have the ladder and you go to grab the rope, you can hear that and feel that it doesn't seem like the bottom of the rope is anchored to something. You grab it and you can hear like a, like a hollow uh, and it seems like there's like a bucket or something at the bottom, like at the very end of the rope, oh, so that you could pull, you know, some, put something in the bucket oh, and then hoist it back up out. So there's some kind of, it, it, you could hang on it, like it's tied right, to the right, roof, yeah. yes, That's but the bottom is not I'm, anchored. Okay, yeah. great. That's fine. Okay. So you try to get one hand on the ladder, one hand on the rope. You sort of test the tensile strength of the rope, a little bit of the ladder. You hear a little bit of like creaking. Carefully now. Look down below you. There is sort of a pulsing. You can't see the source of it, but there's like a pulsing light coming from down below. Okay. She's gonna start climbing down. I'll follow after. I will. I'm last. Oh, I'm last. You start your descent. Each step causing the rungs to kind of groan in response, and the smell of the fresh evening air is replaced by stale warmth and the smell of soil, like it sort of envelops you, the earth around you, it smells like earth. The noise from the ladder is only further highlighting a lack of any kind of organic sound. You don't hear, certainly don't hear anyone's voice, you don't hear anyone talking, and you don't hear any creatures, there's no animals that you can hear as you're moving down. You continue slowly using, you mostly use the ladder, but yeah. occasionally kind of steady yourself with the rope just to make sure, and you continue down. At one point, one of the, one of the parts of the ladder just kind of gives a little bit and you don't fall, but you hear like a bunch of little rubble kind of trickle down to the bottom where it, it even sounded like at the bottom there might be a little bit of water. Like it goes mm -hmm. just at the very, very, very bottom. Yep. You hear that? You go down a little further and you get to the point. Sorry, can I see the map for a second? Yeah. Um, you get to the point in the structure where yes, please. you get to the first point in the structure where the two shafts go horizontal. Yeah. So you're sort of moving down slowly. Actually, you know what? Look it. Let's look at it. Let's look at it big. big. Let's look at it. My most broken. <laughs> I broke it. Oh, no. Oh, no. Um, go ahead and turn your monitors on for me. We can okay. take a look uh, this All way. Right, okay. Let me know when you guys got your monitors on. It is on. Ooh, oh, great. Wow. On. Oh, so, oh, how cute. This is the top here where you guys oh, started descending like down. And Morna was sort of working her way down the ladder. Oh, this is so cool. <laughs> oh, wait. Holding sorry. the rope occasionally. And once again, sort of each time, 
sometimes knocking bits of rock that sort of fall down the shaft, and you get to this sort of cross area. You can see a little bit of track that was laid down that seemingly was ways to get ores and minerals in from the sides. We're taking a look at the mine itself, so that you guys came in from the top here, down, and now you're at this kind of T crossing here. So as you get to this point, you can take a look both to the left and right. Give me a perception check as the first person to kind of come by here. Uh, Rufus hasn't started going down yet. He's not. He's still up to. There isn't really enough room yet for all of you to be on the ladder, Great. at least to this point. Only an eight. Eight? Okay. Assisting you a little bit is the fact that there are lanterns in here. Like, this place is lit. Yeah. It's like somebody lit lanterns in this. This place is lit. <laughs> As you look down the western end of the shaft, mm -hmm. you notice a couple things. One is that there is a minecart at the end of this little length of track. And the minecart, just as you're kind of coming down another rung and looking to the west, the minecart is rolling and then it boom, comes to a stop. Like as if it was rolling a little bit and now it's slowing and then comes to a stop as soon as you got to that point. Uh. The other thing that you notice is that lining the walls, like all along this wall here, uh -huh. are dozens of pickaxes. And each one of these pickaxes has a big hunk of a kind of quartz crystalline stone right at the T, like the apex of the pickaxe. And it reminds you of something that Ace mentioned. Yeah. Oh. These might be where Bison is storing some of Spencer Stott's rejected items of experimentation. Yeah. She mentioned that he had designed a uh, Thunderstone propelled pickaxe yep. that was supposed to like make mining so easier, cool. but it was causing injuries. Like it was so forceful that people were like breaking their hands and stuff. So it give seems me, give me, give me, give me. it seems like Bison has put down here maybe some of the failed Spencer Stott experiments. Mm. Oh. Here oh, that's so good. So there must be at least twelve of these, maybe even more, twelve to twenty of these pickaxes like lining along the wall there. Um, does it look like somebody was moving that? With that perception check, hard to tell. All uh, you saw was a little bit of cart kind of moving. The top is open. You can't see into the cart itself. The top is open. She's going to um, step off onto that level and say, Wesley. Do we get a response? Did you see someone? Amy. As Rufus hears you say, Wesley, even quietly, is he? You uh, shut up. Yeah, Doxley puts her hand right up and bunches up his collar. She's gonna walk towards that end. I'll follow her. Can I mean, I, I would I would actually try to signal to TC to go on the other end and see if there's something down that other side. Okay. Give me a stealth check as you creep toward the cart. Give me a perception check as you get to that juncture here. Yep. Okay, um, um, uh, uh, 15. 15. Seven. As you look down this way, no movement. There is a cart there, but it doesn't seem to be moving. Again, sort of a long tunnel. It looks like they kind of dug down into the earth here and maybe hit a point where they couldn't find anything of value. However, lining this corridor is a number of helmets that, like, uh, like sort of hard hats almost looking helmets that again have this, like, like a ring of crystal or glass, like around the brim of the uh, of the helmet. Okay. You don't know what their purpose is. Ah. That, that, that's <laughs> not something that Ace mentioned. But again, you get the impression that these have some kind of special function that you're not sure what they do exactly. And there's like a few piles of them. There's like yeah. four piled, six piled. Like they're they've been and they look like they've been stored here for a while. They're they're a little okay. dusty. There's not like damage nearby, like. No, 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 okay. that's obvious to you. Mm -hmm. Just gonna leave those for now. Uh, stealth check? A, f uh, a seven. Seven. <laughs> Start to creep along a little closer. At one point, your foot just kind of slips off the track ever so slightly. Creep a little bit further. And just as you're about to kind of get close enough to kind of look over and into the cart itself. Oh, 
There's a low groan that goes throughout the tunnel. And TC, you hear an, this too? An animalistic groan? Or like a structural groan? Hard to tell. Oh. <laughs> oh. <sighs> Wes is not in. Grab the edge of the cart. It's empty. I'm gonna. I'll, sort of, I'll get motion to her to. And, uh, yeah, I'm gonna. Go start first. Climbing down again. Okay. Is, are people joining them now? Yes. Now that there's room to. Yes, yes, yes. Right. I think Ilian was next. I think you said you wanted to go last. So Ilian and then Kate and then Doxley. So Doxley, you're kind of still up at the top. Like you're maybe kind of on the ladder, but you haven't started going down below yet. Give me a perception check as well up there on the surface. Okay. Okay. 12. 12. Just as you're starting to prepare to go down once room is being made for you, you give one kind of last sort of get up on your haunches and you give a look around just to see if anyone's approaching, if there's any lights, uh. any sounds of horses. Kind of look around. Don't see anything, so you. Before I go down, I'm sure. going to motion to Rufus to yeah. come here. He's standing right there at the edge with his kind of knapsack. Doxy's going to grab him by the collar. You want to know how you're not going to be a bad father? You're not going to follow us down here. Give me an intimidation check. Eleven. Eleven, okay. You just... I'm going to let him go. You can see, again, the sort of battle in his head. I mean... You, the thought strikes you that if you know he were to hear his son's voice, that that would be hard to not come down. But he, he nods, he listens, he stays up there. He doesn't like make a motion like he's gonna follow you down the ladder or anything. I'm gonna start heading down. All right, start to head down. Uh, first two people coming down. Give me stealth checks for Morna and TC. Oh, I don't Aww. like this disadvantage. It's not fun. Ooh. Um, twenty-four. Ooh. What? With disadvantage. What a fucking eight. <laughs> <laughs> TC has the advantage of following behind, so keeping careful anytime you kind of make a step that creaks or groans, TC makes sure not to step in that spot. However, on your way down, you do have to, as you can see here, you had to kind of swap over to another ladder. And as you did that, your butt kind of bumped the rope. And again, that bucket that's at the bottom of it, you can hear it kind of boom. Poom, poom. The just kind of hits the sides of each of the uh, of each of the parts of the shaft here, and everyone, you and every, you stop. TC stops. The people above you stop. Everybody waits. That sounds like a fucking bear. <laughs> I'm just gonna keep keep going down. Keep going down. As you start to get to the base of the ladder here, you notice a couple things. First of all, as you heard with some of the bits of rubble that kind of fell down here, there is a little bit of pooling water at the bottom. Possibly you've hit kind of uh, an underground sort of well of water here as they dug deeper. And as you peer into the bottom of this little um, oh. sort of pool of water, give me a perception check. Oh my goodness. <laughs> oh. Oh. Does it count? Uh, does, it, does it count? It just kind of fell. Uh, <laughs> Why do I feel like this is not it gonna be a good roll? It fell right out of my hand. Um, it's a six. It, there is light in here, but there's no light kind of directly over the water, so I'm, it's like black. I'm it's, gonna it's go like... quickly and grab the nearest lantern okay. and peer down okay. and take so another you, better look. You step off for a moment, you grab the closest lantern that's hanging on the wall, and then you hold it over the edge. I'm gonna say that the way you're kind of holding it, you have to hold it out too far, you can allow TC to get a better look okay. at it. I'll sort of motion him down. Yeah, so violently. she points as she holds the lantern over. Give me a perception check. Mm. Two. 
Oh, um, uh, 22. Are you oh, joking? Are you <laughs> fucking? <laughs> a 15 and a 17, and I have a plus seven. Let's go. Okay, oh, plus dear Jeff. And eight on stealth. With the assistance of the lantern, you peer in, and it does seem like there's a bottom. It doesn't seem like it just goes, you know, into the infinite depths. And at the very bottom of this little pool of water are bones, are human looking bones. Oh, that's not good. <laughs> <laughs> And if you remember the loose story that was told by Rufus about what, it, like if she fell yeah. all the way down, she probably would have landed in that little pool of water there. All right. I believe that is Mrs. Diamond. Still no sign of Wes, though. Both of you give me perception checks looking left and right here on the ladder. And who, who was next? Ilian was next? You can give me a perception check too. Yes. You can hear Ilian kind of <laughs> creeping down and you can crane your neck to look both ways. Yeah, okay, you fancy boy. <laughs> <laughs> Nat 20, let's go. Ooh. Um, uh, 16. 16. Nine. <laughs> <laughs> the lantern that you're holding is blinding! Oh my god. Oh my god. half asleep and it's still like, oh, oh my god. Mm. More you look to the west. This fucking idiot. This one sort of extends a little, it doesn't extend quite as far out as the ones up above. But there's a little sort of alcove here where there's a number of crates that you see lying around. The crates look like they have been here less long, not as long as like the carts and things. Like the carts are dusty, the rails are covered in dirt, but these crates, they don't look like they just got there, but similar to the pickaxes and the helmets, somebody brought these down here well after the place was initially dug. So you don't, can't see what's inside them at the moment, but you can see these number of crates. In addition, as you two are looking down that way, Ilian pokes his head down and you peer in an eastern direction. And the tunnel extends a little further down that way. A little bit of rail, a couple of carts, stationary. And a little further, it looks like it opens up a bit. Breaks into some kind of small cavern or something. Sort of unable to see exactly what's over there. I'll say with that nat 20 as well, you hear a little bit of... Coming from that direction. Down this way. Try to creep very quietly. The three of you can give me stealth check. Uh, Am I coming down? Mm-hmm. <laughs> You're just getting to the level there okay. as they're creeping I'm, along. I'm as much as I want to go. I'm gonna stay right where I am so I don't roll with them. You can do that. You can yeah. You can uh, knowing that the, your armor you know makes noise. You're aware of that fact. You 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 can let Kate go by you if you'd like. If she'd like to slip by you and go down the tunnel. So yeah, go ahead and give me a stealth check. That was smart. <laughs> He's down. Twenty five. <laughs> nice. Twenty five. Uh, oh my god. Yeah. Twelve. Twelve. That was better. Six. Oh my god! <laughs> We're leaving her at home. Right now. <laughs> oh my god, for real! TC and Mora, a little bit in haste, having been pointed out by Ilian, you know, what might be down there, moving quickly. There's a cart that's on the rail, and it's difficult to get around. Like, the cart is rather large, and you're trying to move around it, and as you do, it kind of. <laughs> kind of falls on its side a little bit, a little more rubble kind of. falls around. I'm just gonna hold a hand up. Forward a little bit further. I'm gonna like make sure that it's like not gonna move again once I move. Now that it's here, sh- yeah. shifted off the rail, it seems it's stuck. stuck. There. Yeah, okay. it seems like it's not gonna yep. budge at all after that. Continuing. So it, the order is Morna TC uh, Kate. Right. You're creeping further, and you're starting to get a little bit. There isn't a lantern in this next sort of cavern, but there is one, as you can see, kind of. Uh, right before you get into that cavern. Can this I one still that's right have here. mine? Yeah, with you can me? have yours with you. Yes, you can. So, but as you sort of creep a little bit further, the, the darkness of the cavern is sort of enveloping, sort of eating at the, the light that's pouring in there. You can start to see stalagmites and stalactites kind of coming down from the ceiling, coming up from the bottom. They clearly, as they were mining, punched into some kind of large, like not large, but a more open area and then decided to stop and didn't go any further. You're starting to hear some of those noises that sound like quick, quiet breaths. Mm-hmm. As you get almost to the sort of edge here where the shaft stops. 
you look down and there's like a pile of rubble on the ground there that for a mind doesn't strike you, it doesn't sort of jump out at you as you're passing by, but then you give it a look and there's a foot sticking out of the rubble, like a booted foot. And you look up to the ceiling and some chunks of stone look like they fell out of the ceiling. So possibly a small cave-in that came down on a person here. It doesn't look like a child-sized. It does not look child-sized. It looks adult-sized and the body looks like it it's recent that this that this body has not been sitting here for a long time. Okay. So possibly someone followed West down yeah. here, or, yeah. you know. So the body looks fresh. That this we was... only see a foot and rubble. We yep. There's like a pile of rubble with a booted foot sticking out of it. All right. Keep eyes on the ceiling and quietly try to go around it. Okay. Give me one more stealth check for you. Oh, geez. Me too. Oh, oh my god. god. Yeah. Oh, god. There's I no like breathing. What size do I even? There's, one, there's no breathing oh, from the body. No, you can hear that shallow breathing from the next room. Okay. Where they're possibly. I got my stank on it. <laughs> I, all right. I love stank. Twenty-one. Sixteen. Oh if you God. roll in the dice tray, I think it rolls. Better. Yeah, yeah. Usually, yeah. Um, that's actually a thirteen. So. Come on, we're in double digits. <laughs> Huge. Huge for morning. Step around that body, and you peer down into this little sort of cavern that goes down maybe another five, ten feet. Opens up a little bit. And there's a couple of sort of pieces of what looked like uh, maybe he grabbed pieces of a crate. Like there's a lid, there's like a square crate lid that's leaning up against a wall. And you can see the crate lid like shaking a little bit. Like, oh, mm -hmm. like someone behind this little. Morna's gonna pull her hood off and say, Wes, Wes, Diamond. Your father is going to kill you, <laughs> so you better come. You see, over the top of the great lid. Come on now. He gets up. <laughs> the crate lid falls oh, and he. Oh, he was up out of that little cavern. Nice, nice. Crawls up, you, can, you can't help anything kind of... else down there. Do I see like... It's like all, like, it kind of looks like this. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna actually and take out my rope. Yep, stalagmites and, and stalactites. And how far like, away is he? Now he's just five feet away from you. He's crawling oh, 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 oh he's really close. Yeah, okay, he's, this gonna... place is not that big. Oh, okay, yeah, great. it's pretty close to you. Grabs that sort of top part of the rock there. Brace him. <laughs> yeah. Nice. Quietly, gonna get slowly. <laughs> And sort of put him, you know, in front of of us. So Around yeah, the next, body. yeah, next to Kate. Yeah, I'll put so him in front of me, kind of. and I'll have a hand on his shoulder. Uh -huh. Stealth checks for everybody going back. Oh okay. My God. While they Honestly. were all doing that, yes. and I have Please. stopped uh, going down the ladder at that first platform yes. oh and stood near the pickaxe with the thunderstone in it. Sure, there's there's multiple of them. Yeah, I just want to be like kind of near the thing that goes down, but also near one of those. Yeah, that you could grab one of them. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah, 25 yeah. again. 25. Thank you. Keep moving. Yeah, 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 that's that one. Oh, <laughs> oh no. no. I'm getting that boy out of here. I got an 11 if that helps. <laughs> no. That's two ones, it's great. Push oh, them. Boy. You guys are creeping forward. You're trying to sort of corral Wes as best you can, kind of keeping him covered. Ilian, you kind of see them coming and you can see Ilian sort of motioning, sort of beckoning you back in the direction of the ladder. And as you're walking across the uh, little tracks here that the cart once lay upon, the tracks seemed pretty sturdy on the way there, but you step kind of right in the middle of one and it just snaps right in the middle and your foot goes into it. It doesn't make a ton of sound, but you also are like, mm, mm, like your foot is stuck between the two pieces of splintered wood that have sort of come off in two pieces there. I'm getting so out my short sword and I'm trying to help her like pry it out and like. Give me a uh, athletics check. Athletics. I'm gonna pull Wes far, farther away from you can as pull him, to him as, it, I can. as Kate kind of pulls yeah. Wes, she kind of, he doesn't yeah, hand him yeah. to you, but she ushers him kind of to the ladder there. Nine. Nine. And you're kind of pulling at your leg there. Give me an athletics check as well. Okay. I want to look behind you to see which one. Yeah, the whatever one. Oh my god! Oh my god! Oh my god! 
Um, okay, that's uh, 16. Yes! Woo! Okay. As you yank and as TC sort of wedges the sword, a little thing snaps, the piece of wood goes flying, your foot comes free, and there's a little bit of a rumbling beneath that foot that you had kind of down on the ground there. And for a split second, you have flashbacks of the Kruthix that were crawling through the downwield. But unlike the short period of delay that preceded those sort of insectoid creatures tunneling out, chasing you across the bridge, there's barely enough time to register the vibration before something serpentine oh. punches through the rock. Ah. It w unwinds its body and it bursts forth with this cloud of dust and rubble slamming into your chest. Yep. And it continues to unfurl until it whoosh, pancakes you up against the <gasps> ceiling of the shaft here. Oh. And it knocks the wind clear from your lungs. <gasps> Immediately all of your breath goes out. And rather than stay to kind of bite or strike, it retreats as fast as it appeared. <gasps> I try to catch her. the ground. Give me an athletics check. I'm still there. What? Can I also it's assist? Sure. Give me. Give it with. Uh, you oh, make it with. I have rolled like three twenties, but no. I'm gonna say it's an even roll because she's helping. Ah. So take that. Go ahead and take the better roll there. Natural twenty. <laughs> You're able to grab her. Once again, as it's retreating just as fast as it appeared, it differentiates itself from the Kruthix because instead of leaving a burrowed hole, you were able to see like the Kruthix holes that were burrowed into the rock. As it retreats, it quickly covers the opening with its little sort of appendages. So. <laughs> so that when it's gone, it looks like it was never there. Oh, There's just like a pile of kind of cracked rock on the ground beneath you. So you got slammed up against the ceiling and then TC grabs you on the way down. You do take bludgeoning damage from yeah. being pushed up against the ceiling, but no damage from falling from the ceiling. You take 13 bludgeoning damage. <gasps> no. Are you... Deirdre. Deirdre. In the brief moment that you were pinned to the wall, what you saw in front of you was some kind of carnivorous rock worm. Oh my Sort of God. scales made of stone, the very gray in texture, even with the lantern in your hand that you would be able to see its color. And it didn't quite open its mouth, but you could see like a thin slit of a mouth kind of going from no. end to oh end. God, and it, it, oh, it yeah. uses its blunted snout as an instrument of bludgeoning rather than a more typical sort of worm or snake would use its venom or its fangs or something, but yeah. it doesn't. It bursts forth, boosh, hits you against the ceiling and then <laughs> Back into the ground disappears. If we stand still right now, do we? Do I take a minute to stand still? Do I hear anything? Again? Everybody, give me a perception check. <laughs> I would like to healing surge. You may, as you fall into TC's arms, the first thing Morna does. Let's <sighs> try and get her second wind. Nineteen. Nineteen. Um, perception. Eleven. Eighteen. Ten. Oh my fucking god. <laughs> okay. Okay. And then, sorry. This is perception, you said? Mm -hmm. um, that is a nine. A nine. For those of you who rolled kind of above 13 or higher, you can hear within the walls of this place, like, like this thing is able to traverse stone and earth with ease. Like, you can hear it kind of moving and snaking in and out of all the little corridors that are within the earth itself only bursting forth when it feels like it has an opportunity to do so. Hearing that, Doxley is just going to lightly reach behind her and find the hilt of one of those um, pickaxes mm -hmm. and just hold it, waiting. And is Wes able like, to see He's like kind thing? of in your arms, he's not in your arms, oh, you're holding oh, him kind right. of against the ladder. So you're right. holding onto a rung, he's got it, like he's holding onto two rungs. Wes, we're gonna make it up. I'm gonna be right behind you. You start, okay? Slowly. Starts to work his way up. Is uh, is there a pile of that, some of that stuff that we had seen um, kind of right near where we are now? What stuff? Uh, uh, well, there was the helmets at one point, the pickaxes. This it, corridor that led yeah. to the cavern that Wes was hiding in mm -hmm. did not have any items. So the other direction had some crates that you don't know what was in them. And then uh, up above, uh, these, these corridors had the Thunderstones, this one had, the, or not the, the Thunderstone pickaxes, and then this had those crystalline helmets on this okay. one. So those okay. are the options that you can have. As Wes is climbing up sort of with Ilion, almost cradling him like yeah. on either side of the ladder, he gives kind of one look back down. 
My mom's down there. Yeah. Someone's gotta get him. I hear you. We will. All this was for nothing. I know. We'll get her. Who's gonna get her? Any one of us. I just need to make sure you're safe, okay? Give me a persuasion check as you see him looking down below him into the water. Um, persuasion, uh, 13. 13. Okay. Alright. I'm up. Having that happen, do I see, are you looking down at all? Like, so you, she, like, yeah, I mean, she's not that far, so you went down far enough to be within range of those, uh, of those pickaxes. Yeah. So Doxley's kind of, like, right here at this platform, and you're close to that. You're just a little bit further down. Yeah, so like halfway down the, the if ladder I there. Can lock eyes with you and be like, Wes, for you, I'm going down. And Wes sees Doc. <laughs> his hand. Pulls himself up to that next level there. TC and Morna. Um, and Kate, who are kind of at the bottom of this area here. Right. Perhaps a large piece of debris thrown back into that chamber where he was. And at that exact moment, another one of us can try and go get a significant bone, like a skull or something, mm -hmm. to show for it. Any skull? I don't know how many skulls are down there, but yes. Some... It was in the, the bones are in the water, right? Yeah. yeah. How, do we know how deep like, it looks-ish? Um, I got a good look. You did get a good look. Um, it looks, yeah, like five to 10 feet deep. Uh, okay. yeah. We're assuming no. that's water and not like something that eroded her body. It looked like water. It looked <laughs> okay. like- great I question. thought it was like <laughs> poison, yeah. No, it looked like simply, I mean, bodies decay very okay. quickly if they're sitting in water. So, And she's been there for now months, yeah, so. Yeah. All right, I can breathe under there so I can go down. All right. I say we tie a rope around one of us, perhaps you, another person gets ready to throw a big piece of debris into that chamber. Okay. You jump down and there's another person to help you up Great. so that we do this quick as fucking can be. I agree. Who's the strongest? Uh, Me. Pretty strong. All right. Uh, you help, I'll go she oh, helps yeah. you. Pull him up. You up. You and I will throw this debris. Yes, sir. So you guys walk over. You get, we'll say you could grab like a, this bucket here or just some rocks. What do you want to grab there? So, something with some heft to it. It's some better than a. You could take the bucket and like put a couple rocks into it. Yep. And I'll grab the biggest rock I can find. Sure. Well, no, no, we'll work together on this. You want to throw, throw multiple things? No. I want one impact so that that is what it goes okay, for. Okay, fine. He's got a big sort of bucket of rocks Grab there. And yeah. So you're tying a rope around his waist. Is I have, that the plan? I have my rope. Yeah, I'll tie it sure. around, okay. around his waist. She has the other end of it there. So before this shit starts, I'm going to look to Wes. Mm -hmm. Get up there. No. He's going to make a stealth check here. Oh my come God. on, come on, buddy. Ooh. Okay. Well, uh, <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> wasn't the worst it could be. Uh, so, you guys are getting ready to toss yeah, at the same I time? Yeah, say we're like, you know, six or seven feet from the edge down into the chamber so mm -hmm. that we can get a good heft and it'll go down into there. Mm -hmm. You should start to scale down so that you don't make a splash, okay? I think any movement I make is gonna make some sound. I think he jumps when we throw. Fine. All right. On us. I'm ready. One, two, two. Give me athletics checks, both of you. Yours with disadvantage, yours yeah. just regular. And you're just jumping into the just water. Just jumping in. Oh, that's good. 18. Fuck. Oh, Dice is on oh, fire. Um, um, tw uh, t uh, dirty 20. <laughs> the two of you Fuck. take one big heave, you throw the whole bucket, and you're, you're worried a little bit that maybe some of it's gonna spill out, but the angle hits just right, and it flies through the air, and it goes into that far tunnel, and it and makes just a clattering loud noise. All the rocks, and you immediately, you hear that response of noises that sort of all around you. You go into the water. It's very dark down here, but you are able to sort of pat around. There's a few bones. Give me a uh, a investigation check. Come on, come on. Ooh. While that's happening, can I go get on the ladder? 
Yeah. Sure. Okay. Uh, 14. 14. Wait, no, that's a dirty 20. That's a 19. <laughs> Woo! Yeah. Okay. You sort of run your hands along the bottom carefully so as you're not to like cut your hand or anything. You feel a few different bones, I mean, could different sizes, legs, arms. Are you looking for something in particular? <laughs> Ev- anything I can carry, like as I, a bone sure. passes, boom, into the arm, yep. into the arm. A couple of bones that might be arms, fingers, and at one point you put a hand down and your yes. thumb kind of goes into a hole Ew. and you pull it and there's a skull there. I, having heard that there were maybe some antiques on her as well, mm. yeah, keeping that in mind as I'm sifting Ooh, through yep. As you kind of bones. run your hand along <laughs> the bottom of this small little pool of water, as you're down there, you can't really hear because you're yeah. underwater, but you do kind of you can feel the Ugh. vibrations of the earth kind of around you just as you're down there. If he's taking a little while, I'm gonna look for another maybe big piece to throw down there. Sure, again. this is pretty quick at this okay. point as he's sort of searching around. You find two things. Uh, one is a ring of some kind. There's a metal ring that you can't get a good look at. It's mm. very, very dark. There's a metal Shit ring of some kind. Okay. And in addition to that, it seems like there was um, maybe a, uh, like, a not quite a glove, a bracer, like a like a bracer for the arm. Oh, is yeah. like a Kevin. it has like a metal Love sort bracer. of bracelet part, and then another part, and then it's connected by a chain. Hell so it has yeah. huge. <laughs> so okay. maybe a piece of jewelry or something. But yes, a if, couple pieces. If I feel like I'm getting less and less returns off of what I'm holding and my limit to amount of bones in my arm, I would say you could stay down here and search more. But now you've taken a little bit of time. You have a number of bones in your hand. You have a couple pieces of jewelry. No, I'm gonna head out. <laughs> You see Ilian's surface there. Pull yeah, him back up. Start pulling him back up. Give me an athletics check with advantage because he's he's hel- he's not you know weighing you down really. Oh my god, I'm not looking. None of those count. What are you doing <laughs> over there? I'm freaking up. I- out. <laughs> with advantage, mm-hmm. that's 19. Mm-hmm. Yeah, there we go. Pull Ilian out of the water. Grabs the ladder. You can see he's ho- like cradling a whole bunch of bones. You see some metal shining in the light there. <sighs> All right, I'm gonna start up the ladder slowly. One arm. What are you guys doing? And I'm gonna try to indicate. Put it in the bucket. <laughs> just put the oh, shit in the bucket. Huge. huge. I'm just gonna be like right. big brain. Yeah. Fuck. Right, I, I, when I get to that level, yeah, you get to that point. You start one bone. Putting in like quietly. Boom. Mm. Yeah. Take the last piece of jewelry. In the bucket there. It's silent again. It's quiet in here. I I could go down. Okay. Fuck <laughs> 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 you. Yeah. Kane is already climbing. Like already like yeah. as far up as possible. Keeping an eye on a uh, Wes and can I see him from down here? Wes has already made his way up. Okay, great, great, great. You, had, you told great. him yeah. to get out of there and he great. scurried up. Good. I'm, I'm going as fast as possible. Go ahead and give me one more round of stealth checks, everybody. Hey guys. One more roll. Nice uh, die. Nice, uh, happy no, die. You didn't go all the way up. No, 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 yeah. yeah. I, I would like to be the last one back up. Okay. Too. Sure. Okay, not so good, but that's okay. 10. Sorry. It's okay. Um, 17. 8. 16. Uh, 12. Oh, you guys are climbing up. And Ilian, after feeling sort of the a little bit of exhilaration after finding the bones, you found the jewelry, you can sort of see the air up above you, the home stretch is yeah. in front of you, and you just hear and feel. Oh, shit. You get smacked against the side of the wall, and you start to fall, and uh, yeah, we down you're low. above him. I'm above him, Oh, I, I can reach down. I think. Give me, all three of you give me uh, athletics checks. Not athletics. Oh, what high am I? Oh, 10. 17. Mm-hmm. I'm on fire oh. with these disadvantage rolls. Yeah, you, yeah, you should always disadvantage. have disadvantage. Yeah. yeah, that's 22. 22. Nice. So you immediately, the two of you grab Ilian, but you can see again, boom, boom, it knocks the air out of you. You take <gasps> 20 bludgeoning <gasps> damage. Minus three, right? Master. Does it have to be a weapon attack? Let me see. Oh my god. Um, while He's you're not out, is he? He's bludgeoning, fine. piercing, and slashing damage that you take from non-magical attacks is reduced by three. Non-magical attacks? Okay, oh, okay yes, okay, reduced okay. by so three. Seven, so 17. I'm chill. Oh my god. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> you grab Ilian. Everybody kind of waits and listens. You guys are now sort of ascending. You're in the, oops, I'm on the wrong thing here. 
guys are ascending in the sort of mid range here. You've gotten up to the next tier, so you're getting getting up to where Doxley is. You, you can see now Doxley kind of like waving for you to keep going, motioning <laughs> upward. I'm gonna try it. Everybody heads up, and for the last stretch, one more round of stealth checks. Oh uh, who God. was up going up the ladder first? Me, Kate. But I'm gonna say you made it all the way up. No check. Oh required. hell yeah. Um, so everybody's now on the ladder, working their way up. Stealth. This is stealth. Stealth check. Yeah. Nineteen. Nineteen. Seven. Early. Ten. Okay, um, that's a 19. Yes! 19. <laughs> One more time, you hear the low groan of something moving through the walls here. And you look to the left and you can see a little bit of rock starting to crumble away at the wall. <laughs> oh. I, I'll try to catch yeah. him again. I'm trying to need you too, so yeah. I'm gonna try. Oh. Oh. Okay, uh, 13 this time. Oh, 13 no. bludgeoning damage reduced to 10 bludgeoning damage. Are we trying to grab him again? You are, um, uh, give me an athletics check. That's a 10. Oh, yeah. For your athletics. Yeah. Great. You sort of grab him, but it kind of pulls you down a little bit, the weight so of Ilian and just the suddenness of it happening. And as TC goes to grab, oh. Oh my god, guys. <laughs> By a worm. 19 bludgeoning damage. Oh, 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 that is one point away from massive damage. Yeah. 19. Holy shit. And with fucking falling? With no one to grab. No, I'm behind. Team. I'm last. I'm last. I said I was last. Give me an athletics check. Oh, yes. Go. Go, 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 go. Muscle mommy! He was those bicep socks. Okay, uh, 18. 18, nice. TC yeah. begins to fall, it just sort of almost losing consciousness just from the force of the blow, but you feel somebody grab around your chest and your waist and yank you back up onto the platform there. You feel Doxley like grab your hair a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> right by the root. <sighs> Kate is up, Morna is up, okay. Ilian was high enough to get all the way up. Okay. Two people left in the tunnels here on that lower, on the first platform here. Come on there, Charmer. Yes. <laughs> Creeping back up, are you following oh him up? Follow. Both of you stealth checks. Come on, come on. There's ice in there. Oh, uh, 16. 16. Oh, thank Christ. Um, uh, over 20. Uh, um, 24. Coming up the top. <sighs> TC pulls his way up. As TC gets up, you look at his face, just like he, it's red just from the force of the blow and his, all of the oxygen kind of leaving him all of a sudden. <sighs> pulls himself back up to the top. You can feel like eight different hands like grab your back of your shirt and pull you the rest of the way up. Doxley gets to the top, <sighs> pulls yourself up, and as you're kind of going up, you hear one more kind of low groan below you. And the only thing left is the dangling rope all the way down. All right, bucket. Slowly. As that was happening, can I say that I like pulled uh, uh, Wes and his dad away? Yes, like in fact, they, like... they moved a little okay, bit away. Great. You can see that he's like kneeling kind of down by his son. Right. He's like holding him a little bit In the there. darkness somewhere Yep, he's there. like looking okay. over at where you guys are there. Okay, bucketing up. Give me a stealth check with advantage with people helping you to pull the bucket up. You gotta not hit the walls of the... Uh, Okay, okay. You can do it. With advantage. Okay, you Oh, with advantage. Yeah, because but someone's yeah, helping. That's just a normal roll for me, right? Because I was at disadvantage, so I just. Uh, I'm gonna say with advantage. This is, you're not moving. Okay. You're just pulling up the rope, so your armor has okay, little great. to do with. Great, great, great. That's awesome. It's great. Oh my god. <laughs> Eight. Eight. As you're pulling it up, oh, TC's no. helping you a little oh bit. God. And you're trying to navigate it so it doesn't hit any of those platforms, but at one point, toom. I reach over and yank. Ooh. Start nice, nice, yanking. Nice. Pull yeah. it as fast as you possibly can, and something comes out, and the bucket kind of smashes oh. against the wall. A couple of the bones go flying nice. free. Pulling it up as fast. Yeah, now yank. give me athletics check. One of you oh. give me a with advantage athletics check. Um, I'm feeling great. Go, go. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. With advantage athletics check. Oh my god. Oh my Double god. Double roll again. Uh, that's still uh, 16. 16. <laughs> Pull it up as fast as you can, and just as you get the bucket up kind of out, you see something just move through the rock down below. You look inside, the skull is there, and one smaller bone that might be like an arm bone, 
and it looks like the larger wrist sort of pauldron piece. The ring is still in there. The mm. other piece is not. The bracelet's gone. It got knocked out of the bucket from the force of the blow. You look down, and you can like see with the glinting off of the water, like the lantern light at the very, very bottom. As soon as it kind of quiets down, you'll hear like a couple. Quit sighing. Let's get the fuck out of here. I'm just catching my breath. All right. Come on. What in the hells was that? Doesn't matter. Let's go. I'm grabbing the bucket and I'm running over to to Wes and his dad. Sure. You, you, the bucket's attached, kind of. You oh. can take the contents out. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Grab the bones in yeah. bare hands. Put them in my poncho. And I'm gonna walk over and just present them to them. You can see the two of them barely registering kind of what's happening. You can see him sort of consoling his son. You can hear small apologies coming from Wes, sort of apologizing for having gone down there. They're kind of whispering back and forth to each other. And that's where we're gonna end oh for this my evening before we uh, reunite and work our way back oh to town. Oh. Um, you better roll. Oh my God, what the actual <laughs> fuck? Does this mean you're wearing the clear hat tonight? <laughs> the dunce cap. Uh, clear I put you in a potato sack with eye holes, oh, actually. Oh, yeah. uh, so many talented map makers out there, but a special yeah. shout out to Ivan. Oh, Isn't this, this a cool so map? Pretty. So they call yes. these they call it. these kind of diorama style maps. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, here, let me bring it back up and I'll zoom out oh, a little bit. Oh, it's perfect. Um, oh, so you can see oh, the entire oh, my oh, God. Yeah. It's giving the side. They're wow. super cool. Super smash. Um, yeah. 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 yeah, very cool. Oh yeah, you hit somebody real hard, they're like, boom, 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 boom. <laughs> Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> bung, bing, bung, bung. So uh, thank you very much for your awesome map making skills. Um, yeah. And well done everyone. A couple oh. of, boy, I thought somebody was gonna get uh, massive damage oh, there. I was well, without the, Minus 21 and it did 20 damage without the mitigation. So it was Ooh. very close. Needed a little bit more. I think if that was, that was almost a max roll. I think it might not have had enough to, to, to okay. knock you in one. And I have my total is 40, and you did 19. Yeah, so yeah literally it was. It was um, oh, if it had happened to me on those other rolls, I would have been massive damage, but I got 13, which is just lucky. Yeah. Is yeah. the massive damage after like the feat is computed? Yes. Oh, yeah, okay. it would be after your heavy. Okay. Gotcha. So I really need to take. But yeah, those were uh, those were forty sixes, so that was pretty close to full. Wow. Forty sixes. Oh, yeah. Thank you, Muscle Mommy, for catching me. <laughs> yeah. Oh well. Wow. So would draw that right now. TZ could see the water yeah. coming up, and you grab like his foot, like. <laughs> <laughs> That is where we're going to end. Wow. Uh, um, an awesome episode. Good well done, everybody. Moves. Wes rescued. Oh, Whoever yay. was watching over this mine, maybe buried in a pile of rubble yeah. Yeah. Down nice. underneath. Um, a couple good. of trinkets recovered, a couple of bones recovered. To possibly, they can uh, put this matter to rest. The old diamond family. Yeah. We, have to play, we have to play Brunk Hollow Double Pass, see who gets the ring. Need to find somebody who can identify them. Mm -hmm. That's true. Um, awesome, that's where we're gonna pick it up again next week. Uh, we're gonna do some shout outs. Yeah. And then we're gonna take a quick little break. We'll play some play some Tchaikovsky tunes. Yeah, uh, oh, uh, let's go. go. While we just uh, go to the bathroom, sort of turn over the room, and then we'll be back for Notch and Soda. Everybody stick around. Yeah. If you're watching on TikTok, you can subscribe to us on Twitch and watch it there. Yeah, I know there was a bunch of gifted subs, so if you got a gifted sub, hang out, ask questions, Yay. ridicule Morna's roles. Aww, <laughs> poor thing. It will never be as mean as what she's saying to herself. It's true. Yeah. You had a couple good catches there, and people follow yeah. And I, caught, I yes. caught people. Yeah. I just can't walk around. For sure. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh, I'm sorry. Kelty Cloudy rated us <laughs> when oh, we were in the thick well, of it. Hello. I totally Thank missed you. it. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you so much. Thank you for joining. Wiz Renning gifted us a capuchin with a jacket resubscribed. Ali Slayer did 100 bits. Jay Brownie did 1,000 bits. Thank Oof. you. Ali Slayer, another 100 bits. Thank you. And uh, yes, please join the Discord. Uh, Pokodogo should be making a channel, uh, like a post thing, just specifically about this episode where you can talk about it and not worry about spoilers or anything. Um, and yeah, it's Yay. time for some nachis and Nachi sodas, Bob. Awesome. We'll see everybody in just a moment. Um, oh yeah, when we just for Twitch, when we have to do the notch and soda, we're gonna go offline and we'll come like right back on. So just refresh your browser. I'll put it in Twitch chat. Yeah, too. just for the. Okay. Uh, we just have to set it to subscriber. Yeah, just set it to the view only. What Tchaikovsky tune are we playing? I think it's a medley. I got a point. All the hits. Yes. It depends yeah. how long we take to get back. Oh, yeah, that's true. <laughs> so enjoy. Yeah. Um, all right, everybody. We'll all be right. back in just a second. Bye. 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 Bye.